Look at the thing. Look at the thing. Look at, no, you look at the thing. I'm looking at uh, my camera's up there. <laughs> we can say welcome back anytime. You yeah. look at the thing. No, you look no, at the look, thing. There you are. I'm going to look over there. Everybody joining. It's like all 10 of them because it was taking up 40% of the CPU of the system. Right. Welcome back to CVO Gun Talk, where we actually met an hour early and planned things this morning. Well, sort of. And we had breakfast. We did have at breakfast. At the breakfast house. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah. I've never had a bad breakfast there ever. And uh, we totally made uh, your wife jealous. Yeah, I think she she's probably listening right now. She probably, the cat's out of the bag. Okay. Joe's chasing the cat and the cat's out of the bag. Joe would never, ch- Joe, Joe is our cat. Yeah. All right, here we go. We got so much stuff to talk about. I'm going to go over here and look at our little notes. You ready? So, hey, by the way, what have you done this week? It's only Tuesday, but you've already done what? Uh, oh, I don't know. Is it him? No. Let's put it. Let's let's do feedback. I think it's yours. Is that it? We're done. <laughs> hey, we're pros. Jeez. What'd you say? This is like show 26. Yeah, we're and just. And Ernie's supposed to know how this works. Yeah. All right. You didn't like the double feedback, mystery guy. I was like, "What's that noise?" Anyway, yesterday, you, where where did you work yesterday? This is always a fun game. Well, I worked at the ambulance yesterday. A- am- ambulance. Yeah. You only work at one ambulance place? No, a couple, two, three. Okay. Two, All three. Right. You're not allowed to say which one. Well, I can, but I mean, I'd rather not. All right, here we go. When you were working at the ambulance place, did you have anything on your mind like, "Oh my God, tourniquets make people lose limbs"? No. Um, no, <laughs> that's never really on my mind because I know it's not true. Uh, but I did do some training earlier in the week where I was at a local business where that that uh, that myth came up surprisingly, which it always shocks me because I thought, I guess I think because you get your little bubble, right? And I'm in this bubble. I, I have a big bubble. Well, but, you yeah. know, but we all get in our little bubble of yep. life. Yep. And I'm in this bubble where, I mean, I have disproved that myth a long time ago, and it doesn't even enter my mind, but it's still out there. Mm-hmm. It is still out there, and we must crush it. There's, let, what do I deal with in my um, in my little world, little gun store bubble world? Um, hey, I'm gonna get my wife a revolver because they're more reliable. They never jam, and it works under stress. So that's the way to go. Right. Get a super lightweight little revolver. Super lightweight because it's um, easier for her to carry. Yeah. Um, if you shoot the bad guy outside of your house, drag him back inside. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Um, my dad actually told me that once. I was rather like, be no, dude. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I, no. I'd rather be uh, carried by six than judged by twelve. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. And hold on. Nineteen elevens are better than Glock. I deal with that all the time. Well, because more stopping power. More stopping power. Power. You got to make it wire. Yeah. The end. So, and um, let's see. What's the other one I deal with all the time? In the gun store, probably would be, uh, I don't know, people that just always are hell-bent on uh, a shotgun is the greatest home defense. For home defense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, best home defense gun You know, ever. you actually, you, you, as in you, Ernie, actually uh, changed my mind on that. Not so much like I didn't, I wasn't like a diehard, hey, you know, i got to have a shotgun, but, yeah. you know, I always considered it um, a viable solution. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not, but you kind of... Gave me a lot of reasons to rethink that scenario. Because other and, people that know what they're doing gave it, me a lot of yeah, reasons. Yeah, and so now I don't really look at it as... It's the, an awesome tool yeah. for certain jobs, and it's an awesome tool for home defense if, like, hey, I don't live with anybody else I care about. Right. I have a farmhouse that I live in alone out in the country, and so, you know, it's back to where I'm going to shoot anybody in my house I find in there in the middle of the night. Yeah, and I don't uh, care the collateral damage yeah. or... Or I don't care it was my 17-year-old son coming home. So anyway... When we talk about urban myths or things that we have to battle or bad advice that gets given all the time, the tourniquet just won't go away, will it? No, I uh, like I said, I was at this business and I was doing some medical training there and uh, uh, gave him a real short, like thirty minute, how to stop the bleed. And I started talking about tourniquets and I said, "Are you? Do you guys have tourniquets in your first aid kit?" Not expecting them to have it because most businesses don't, but I was just going to encourage them to maybe look at that yeah. option. And they said no because our company policy said there's too much liability. And I was just like taken aback for a minute, and I was like, "Taken aback from it is really your nice way of saying what?" Like, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. There you go. <laughs> that's right. Because we're not going for sponsors anymore, are we? <laughs> yeah, no. We're gonna start telling. And I'm people. not naming names for. It. Yeah. So, so um. Stupidest shit I've ever heard. Stupidest shit I've ever heard. Like it. And so I literally said, "What's more liability?" 
somebody using a tourniquet or somebody bleeding out in your foyer. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of left it at that. Um, and then I told him. You Was know, there rebuttal? We don't have a foyer. You know, no, no, they do have a foyer. And okay. to their credit, you know, they, these are a good group of people. They, it's education, right? Yeah. I had to evangelize a little bit. And I talked a lot about tourniquets and why they're good and bad and what we use them for. And, you know, I I am pretty sure I changed some minds, and they probably will put tourniquets sure. or, lo- or look at changing their policy. So good for them. Um, I'm not saying they're resistant to it, but the initial baseline thought is still out there that tourniquets are bad. Because well, all, all you need for gunshot wounds and stuff is tampons. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another one I've been dealing with mm-hmm. for a while. Every like, once in a while I see you go off about it. Yeah, a it's bit. just... so. If you think of a gunshot wound as not a tunnel, because it's not, right? There's cavitation, like it, the shock wave and all that, like makes a bigger hole on the other side of the little hole that you see. Okay. So if you stuff a tampon in the little hole, what's stopping the bleeding in the big hole? I don't know. Is, uh, it, like a, is it like a path of least resistance kind of thing? The blood just finds some other way out? Yeah, maybe. Or mm-hmm. maybe there's not enough absorbent material or, once again, dumbest shit I've ever heard. Okay. Yeah. But... It literally got past. It's kind of like, hey, if you shoot someone outside your house, drive them back inside. Was that not really bad advice actually given by good people, though? Yeah, because they were using. Um, they were using like 70 year old. Yeah, I'm not going to say best data they had or the. Because maybe it was bad advice. Yeah. It was bad advice that. Yeah, it was bad, bad advice all the way around. But. Based, they use people use what they know, yeah. but things evolve. So, like we always say, if you're still teaching the same thing now that you're teaching five years ago, you're not a critical thinker, and you should probably look at yourself. But sure, um, I, I mean, there's always things that change, right? Sure. I mean, I've changed things in the last six months that I don't really advocate as much as I used to. I changed my clothes today. Yeah. See, it's good. All right. So, any more about turning it? You want to make it clear to people that. Uh, What's research shown? I, you you put it you put on a tourniquet high and tight on my arm. What's the chances of me losing my arm if I only have that tourniquet on for three or four hours? So negligible, right? There's mm-hmm. been uh, I've been doing. I told you earlier when we were doing show prep that uh, you're not supposed to act like we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, you're I know. To go but poof, poof, five like percent right, right, right out of my five percent right off the top. Of so my head. no, I've been doing a lot of research for a class I'm teaching here in the next couple of weeks on you know what's the research based reason you know not just because mike says tourniquets are good but because there's actual research and peer-reviewed articles out there talking about you know length versus width and occlusion pressures and and all these things and you know why do tourniquets work because they stop because they stop bleeding and there's all the research i can find there's roughly about a three percent chance you might have some temporary uh, nerve damage Mm -hmm. um under six hours and but it, I mean, compared to the hundred percent chance you're gonna die, mm-hmm. that's pretty negligible. How many people that have massive bleeding? That it, I mean, wait, let me go back. How do people die from trauma? You well, know, they you usually could, like, go. Crush they usually, your brain, or you could actually. So from trauma, they usually die from shock. Sure. How do you go into shock? Losing a lot of blood. Okay. Spinal injuries. Yeah, and I understand things happen like you know. Uh, just absolutely traumatic uh, brain injury and other things like that. But uh, people bleed to death a lot. Yeah. Too so, often. I mean, shock is lack of perfusion to your tissues. At a, at a, at a, you're not able to, your metabolism, metabolism is not able to process the things it needs to process. And, and that's, there's many different kinds of shock, but at a base level, that's what it is. So shock due to massive blood loss is, it happens pretty quickly. Lose a lot of blood, things go bad. Yeah. 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 So maybe something that stops you from losing blood. Like I said, and, and and just in case, just in case anything goes wrong here this morning or any other time we're hanging out, and someone shoots me and I have the choice of losing my arm because you put a tourniquet on or bleeding out, I, I want to f- fully encourage you to put a tourniquet on my arm. I, I appreciate that. I just want to clarify um, that right there's now. Something like called not... in, there's something called implied consent. Yeah. Consent. So... Yeah. If you weren't of your right mind, I'd do it anyway without your permission. All right. But We're on the talking o- about tourniquet. Yeah, now, right? but on the other yeah, right that. All right. Well, yeah. Wow. But on the other hand, I I, I can I can give you a ninety nine point nine percent guarantee you won't lose your arm if right. you put a tourniquet on here and we called nine one one. All right. We're gonna be good. Because you'd probably be in the university in about an hour. Cool. Cool. So I always wanted to go to the university. 
You never been not, there? Just not that way. Yeah, not know? that way. I've only been there chasing my sister's helicopter, so. Yeah. Yeah. Great place, talented hospital. She I don't friended like... me on Facebook, the other way, by the way. Did she? Yeah. How long ago? Uh, about a week ago. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, been pretty... She's been pretty active. Do you know that story, Shane? Maybe you don't. So Mike is like the guy who's had to respond twice now to yeah. my sister's house. And unfortunately, last time you responded, she had had a massive, massive stroke. So Mike's a good guy in our family, and she remembers him fondly, I think. Um, yeah, didn't she? Didn't I? Hey, I'm going to take one brief emotional moment and talk about something that's funny to me. Um. Walk me back through uh, where you were trying to kind of like, uh, what am I going to say? Try to connect with her or make her know? Yeah, and I was you're trying like, to. I, so I'm Ernie's friend. You know, I don't want to give out too much because HIPAA and all I that. Understand. But I'm talking about my experience yeah. with my sister, by the way, and maybe just randomly some ambulance guys, So ambulance drivers. I was trying to talk and, and kind of judge her level of awareness. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I, and I didn't know her, right? I yeah. didn't realize. I didn't know at that time that you guys were related yeah. at all. Yeah. But I saw her, I don't know how I saw it, but I saw her last name. And I said, hey, do you know Ernie? And she's like, yeah, that's my brother. And I said, oh, cool, he's a friend of mine. And she looked at me with like this. In look, the middle like, of having a stroke. Like in the middle of having a stroke, gave me this look like I don't give a shit. He's got a lot of friends, like real snotty, yeah. right? <laughs> so. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a lot of Mike friends, but I do have a lot of friends. But no, that was uh in a in a in an emotional time and she's obviously she's the one that's gone through everything not me but uh you told me that story and that was pretty damn funny yeah. i could just see that happening so tourniquets save lives they stop bleeding they do go sometimes, go find a stop to bleed class and sometimes it doesn't matter if you're ernie's friend yeah. so um let's just talk about things in random order let's talk about you know people are going to go ernie should know more i was what one of six states that doesn't have the right to keep and bear arms or um, basically I honestly don't know the number, but the constitution, it, it, there's a few. The state constitution of Iowa does not mirror the federal law. That is true. Or I, the I, federal I, constitution. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's an issue. And there seems to be, uh, I don't even know why that's something we, uh, let me put it this way. When I say waste our time with, yes, it needs to be an Iowa law. And when I say wasting time, it should just be something that all the politicians say, well, yeah, okay. It's already literally been established for how many hundreds of years Let's just go ahead and have Iowa law mirror that. So there's a bill in the Iowa. Um, there's lots of bills. Going legislature through. right now trying to add the right to keep and bear arms to the Iowa Constitution, mm -hmm. and surprisingly enough, there's resistance to it. So, you know, I, I mean, don't even know why there would be well, resistance to it. It doesn't surprise me there's resistance, but you know, I don't. I don't even know if it's maybe just for show that somebody wants to say, "Well, I don't want this," you know, to make their version, their constituents happy. But I, I don't I've know. seen some comments where they're like, "This is going to encourage people." Like they're bringing out the fear mongering. I'm like, people, well, it's already part of the fear, U.S. Constitution. Fear mongering. It, yes, it, it works really well for them. It does. It no. does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, you know. I remember when everyone was going to die, like just randomly everywhere when we went to Shell Issue. Yeah. And we still keep hearing that one come up every time. Yeah, I think they're trying to parade out some of those, you know, scenarios as well for this. I don't understand the resistance to adding that to the Iowa Constitution. I think it's a glaring oversight. Um, it leaves gun owners at, uh, you know, kind of leaves them exposed. I mean, there's a scenario out there where y you might be prosecuted under state law, even if you have the right to keep and bear arms according to the U.S. Constitution, right? I mean, I don't know if that's happened, but I can see that scenario developing. And well, that's what they're trying to fix. It's kind of funny that, uh, again, most people that say, we need more laws and blah, 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 they usually have no idea what they're talking about. So, like, let's say, by federal law, a felon can own a black powder gun. It's not yeah. a firearm. It's black powder. But by Iowa state law, they can't own one. We already have a lot of firearms laws in, in Iowa that are stricter than federal law. Um, but, you know, and again, laws isn't the answer. But I definitely, like you said, to me, this is a no-brainer. It shouldn't be very hard to add it to the state constitution. But uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's fun to watch who opposes it. And Iowa Firearms Coalition, Kurt, Kurt and Derek over there, are the other volunteers that do all the actual work, I'm sure they'll call people out, and it'll be fun to watch. And they already have. So 
if you don't follow Iowa Firearms Coalition Facebook page or their website, you should go do that. It's they, he does a really good job of keeping us informed, which is that let, let, I'll bring that up. So I saw the on my Facebook feed. I saw this. I usually try to read everything IFC puts out. And did you watch the video of? Uh, hold on, because I don't want to get this wrong. Truly, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, what's her name? Amber Guff. Gustafson something? Gust- I, Gustafson. Okay, because I don't. It, it doesn't matter if I don't like her views. I don't want to get her name right. Everybody's name is something they should be proud of, and I don't want to get it wrong. But anyway, so you pronounced it correctly. What she's like running for what? District 19. Did you watch her video? I did. About the possibility that Iowa would pass, uh, what is it, uh, House File 2086. So they want to pass a law that says, hey, uh, I'm going to go drop off my kid at high school. And so I can pull into the parking lot wearing my gun on me with my Iowa carry permit, drop my kid off in the high school and, you know, drive away. He hops out, runs inside, I drive away. Which, so, cur- which currently you can't do. Currently you can't do. Or you're a felon. Is it class D? Class D felony. Class D felony, yeah. yeah. So a um, couple things. I talked to, like, some friends maybe, you know, that are kind of, like, associated with being attorneys and things. I understand what's funny is, uh, when I say funny, I understand the other view when uh, one of them sent me a mess said, hey, I'm, I see this law, and this guy's calling it a good bill, but, you know, you're trying to help people inadvertently. Or what he's saying is you don't want people to inadvertently become felons by driving on the school grounds. Now, first of all, I would have maybe picked different verbiage, too, as in if you're going to carry a gun in Iowa, you should know it's 1,000% against yeah, the law to go on the school you grounds. You should be doing inadvertent yeah. things. so— this isn't like, hey, I was speeding. I got pulled over by an officer, and the first place I could pull over that was to the right, that was clear, is I pulled into a school parking lot to get off a traveled roadway, which is like respect for cops, right? Right. Like, let's pull over. You know, because I've had people say, well, I would never pull over if I'm going to pull into school grounds, and now I'm committing a felony. And I'm like, you know, let's go back to the idea that's based off your actions of that, that policeman probably isn't going to make a deal out of you having a firearm on you on school grounds. If you are doing what you're supposed to do, which is pull over to the right as soon as you safely can do so when, you know, you know you're being pulled over. Now, however, somebody out there can say, oh, God, that guy's still a felon for doing that. Mm, no. Her video drove me crazy. First of all, the word um. Um. Yeah. Um. Now we are talking about this one, right? Um. Oh, you got a picture uh, yep, of her? Yeah, that's her. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Um. Yeah. She, I'm going to keep saying that. Um. She keeps saying that she's a gun owner, and I love that, it when that's what start, drove me. It's like yeah. that's like saying like Ricky Bob, like with all due respect. With all due respect, I drive a car too. So <laughs> here's the thing: I can't stand when people say I'm a gun owner. So here's my super valid. I, I'm a gun owner, but I'm a gun owner, but I'm a huge believer in the Second Amendment. But everybody's got a big butt, Dottie. What's your big butt? So here we go. I don't care that she's a gun owner. I don't care that she she immediately talks about uh. Well, there's there's 300,000 permit holders in Iowa, and our very low crime rate proves that they're very responsible, right? She goes into all that. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah, so your point is what? When I drove here today from the breakfast house that I enjoyed breakfast with, the Mike the Medic Macamille, I made a point of I turned off 6th Street on a 33rd Avenue, and from 6th Street to Edgewood Road, this was my today's experiment, I had 39 cars that I counted going the other way on the way to the podcast here this morning. It was horrifying, horrifying, I tell you, that every car going the other way did not have a little floating bubble above it that said, I am a currently licensed driver in good standing with the state, and I don't intend to kill you. I didn't even see any bubbles that said, hey, I'm a bar driver, three-time DUI guy, and I'm currently smoked right now on my way to go get some more beer at Casey's. It was amazing that coming I coming out of my neighborhood. Yeah, pretty good chance. Yeah. pretty good so, chance. You know, it, and somewhere out there, maybe this will reach her, and she could be like, "That guy is such an asshole." That's how simple it is. You drive down the road every day in big metal boxes going at high speeds. Mike, in your experience, have you seen a lot of car accidents on duty? I've seen a few car accidents. Do yeah. they kill people? They do. Good and bad. Yep. No discrimination. Nope. Yep. So. How do you know everybody driving down the road, separated by a magical yellow line, pooped by a moon unicorn that's supposed to separate a vehicle? Yeah, death metal yeah. unicorn. Yeah. So you got some like stripes of unicorn poop in the road. 
that are going to stop a 4,000 pound vehicle going 55, 60, or 80 miles per hour the other road because they could also be speeding, right? Right. They don't have a sign that says I never speed floating above their car. They're passing me on the road going the other way. And I have to, as an adult, have like some level of hope and faith they're going to stay on their side of the road. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes they don't, right? Oh, my God. We've, we've had accidents where people purposefully cross the line in an attempt to kill themselves or somebody else. It happens, not a well, lot. There's even, no, okay. but it happens, right? So those are very few and far between, like school shooters. Yeah, right. That's pretty rare. That, yeah. Which one's more common, people that cross the middle of the road or school shooters? Probably people that cross the middle of the road. I'm willing yeah. to take that bet 100 yeah. times. So let alone somebody's putting mascara on in their car and they cross the road line. I never saw any bubbles that said, I'm trying to put mascara on and I'm talking on speakerphone with my friend right now as they went the other way. I didn't see anything that said, hey... I just squeezed my coffee too hard, boiled, you know, poured hot coffee in my lap, and I'm going to swerve in your lane any given second. It's really that simple. People can make fun of me, but you don't know when somebody's going to cross the line. What do you and I do? We go through our happy day, we drive down the road, and we react if something happens. That's all you can do is react. You can't stare at every car coming down the road the other way and just say, oh, this is the one. This person's going to kill me. Yeah, you don't do that, but we still... You know, I'm not going to use the whole awareness thing, but in we're generally aware of our surroundings, right? So we're aware we're, of my surroundings. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, what I'm the point I'm making is we're not staring at every single car, worried about what that person's going to do, but we are kind of looking to oh. see if things are out of place or whatever. So, but we don't expect those things to be out of place. Because, like you said, we're we're trusting that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be but doing. But to play devil's advocate, I'm going to tell you, I'm spending my awareness, keeping my distance for the car in front of me, and worrying more about the lady jogging on the side of the road that might trip and fall into no, my road. No, true. Ride. And I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not saying we concentrate on each field. No, we're generally I, aware, right? Sure, sure. Just like we're generally aware of anything else. And, and my point was we're going to avoid <laughs> bad situations, but we have to at some point trust that. People are just going to do what they're, sure. they're going to do. No sign above their head that tells me. No. So in this young lady's video, she goes on to say how horrifying it is to think that someone could be this close to her school. I mean, the video is um, maybe we can put a link up to it, technological wizard guy, when we're done. Sure. Okay. Did they hear you say sure or did they just think I'm insane? They think you're insane. Okay. <laughs> they did anyway, which is why they tuned in. So. You know, you've seen the video, so I'll give you the short version. Have... She sits there and says, you know, oh, my God, how horrifying is it to think somebody could be this close to my school with a gun? You know what's horrifying is that anyone, for any given reason, in any game, especially crazy people, can show up at your school and do whatever they want when there's no one to resist them, with or without a gun. I'm not being one of these only thing that stops a good guy with a gun, so, you know, our bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, right? Do guns help? Sure. What really helps, like you say— have the will to do something. Right. So, you know, if you got to beat the dude to death with a garbage can, do it. Blast him in the face with a fire extinguisher, do it. If you choose to do nothing more than run and save your own life, do it. But the thing that irritated me about that video and what I thought was kind of disingenuous is... I'm a gun owner? Is the fact that I'm a gun owner. She said that like a bazillion times, like trying to justify her you, stupid, ridiculous that's, statements. That's factually not true. She didn't say it a bazillion times. She said, um, a bazillion <laughs> times. A bazillion times. <laughs> But the other thing that irritated me is is she said, and I'm paraphrasing, having a gun in the U-shaped drive of a school. It's no place to have a gun in the U-shaped drive of a school because mm-hmm. we don't know what those people are going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Well, I know what they're going to be doing. There's, what do you say, 300,000 permit holders? That's in, what she said, 300,000 yeah, okay. permit holders So we'll just say there's a lot, right? There's a lot. Well, what are they going to be doing? Dropping they're, off their dropping kids. Dropping their kids off at school. Not shooting people. Not shooting people. Yeah. That's what they're going to be doing. But wait. Lamar Wilson had a permit, so on automatically look how crazy all permit holders are, right? Right. And how'd that how'd that work out for him? Well, yeah, he's going to prison probably twice. But anyway, and again, it's well, don't judge. Hey, don't judge all of us by the actions of a few, right? I hear that all the time. So well, that goes back to your kind of like bubble analogy, right? Mm-hmm. If we have a line of cars sitting in the the driveway of a school. I was waiting for you to come up with this. Go. Yeah, we're not going to have a bunch of signs out saying. Good guy, good guy, good guy, good. Oh, bad guy. Mm -hmm. Good guy, good guy, bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have that. So we have to employ the countermeasures and be prepared and do 
active shooter training in schools, and we do what we can. She literally said, how do we know if this person with a gun is a good guy or bad guy? They're not wearing a vest that says, hey, I'm a permit holder. Right. How about— Because we don't I, know. I, I don't even care if you're a permit holder. I'm going to judge your actions. Right. So we can prepare— the best we can, mm -hmm. and try to mitigate things and make sure they don't happen. But, it, you know, the bottom line is we can't take away rights from everybody because you're scared of, like, what one person might do. That's yeah. not the way the United States works. Oh, but it's the way people try to do things. It is the way they yeah. try to do things. Unless certain groups of people. Certain groups of people. You're exactly right. Um I just randomly looked in the I, corner. I can't and see the questions because I, I'm the violator, I think, that had my volume on, so I turned it off. Yeah, we don't see the questions. But oh, as the brilliant... We're not looking at my phone. I think I had the volume on. We're in trouble. Hey, thanks, everybody, for watching. How's that sound? I hope... I want it to be genuine. It is. See? Oh, there see, it is. There it is see, now I hear the volume again. <laughs> Damn it, Mike. We're not looking at my phone. So All right. the U-shaped drive she talked about, yep. all those people sitting there, they also don't have signs above their uh, cars, right? Little magical bubbles like a cartoon that says registered sex offender, drunk driver, person that just uh, found out their spouse is cheating on them and they're going to go crazy today, right? Right. Um, none of them say, hey, possible radical terrorist that's going to drive over you in the school snowplow truck in a minute. Wait for all the kids to congregate in front of the school, right? Do bad guys do such things? They do. Do bad guys know things like, hey... Where will I get the most people in one proximity at a time? Tell me yes, Mike. Yes. They do. They do. Yeah. It's called parades and things, you know, based off, like, history and facts. And, Bastille Day. Yeah. So it's interesting to me that she's worried about something not worth worrying about, but it's a popular hot topic to people that well, don't know any better. She's not. And I'm not mad at her. I want her to come get educated. I'm trying to think of get educated what i can say here because it's not you can say anything you want because we don't have sponsors so you can drop the f <laughs> do what we every want other word do what we want yes um rage against the machine mike rage against I, the machine i generally do i told you i gotta i gotta i gotta rant in my pocket if we run out of time oh you or if we haven't we, we have run out of rants yeah so anyway um you were at Trollapalooza when they did Rage Against the Machine in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. My son's That friend. was awesome. It was fun. There's nothing like watching a bunch of high school kids yep. play in a, like, not even a garage, but we'll call it a porch band. It was my porch band. It was a porch band. That was awesome. Yeah. And you know what? They were actually very good. Yeah. Very they were talented kids. Very and, uh, enthusiastic. But anytime you want to think you can uh, scream like Zach De La Rocha, I'll listen to you. It's funny. Yeah. So she's scared of, like, she's the thought police. Yeah. What's that movie with Tom Cruise? Where Minority they, Report. Minority Report. That's like go. who she is, right? I like, always have that in the back of my That's the way mind. she wants to be. It's like, like I knew you were going to say Let's it. convict people for something they might do. Mike, I need you to go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back, because I know that you're intended on committing a crime when you leave here. Yes. Yeah, Minority Report. People yeah. should go watch it. So that that is fundamentally against... It's un-American, Ernie. Well, she's... You know and I, she, I won't stand for un-American activity. Here's what I want from every politician. And they don't have to agree with me as in what's important to me isn't important to them or we have different views on it. But why don't you do this? Why don't you factually worry about first things first? Hey, what's killing people right now, left and right in this country and in Iowa? Give me a couple top tips. Absolutely, this is— Sorry, I just read one of the comments. I'm throwing and, you this and, under the bus. That's I'm, fine. I'm freaking laughing because— okay. uh, read it then if it's uh, funny. Chris McDaniel said, first time listening. First time watching, listening to the podcast for a while. Ernie is way more svelte than I imagined from listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because if you think I'm svelte— Get off the opioids. That's a bad situation. In Chris is Chris is a friend of mine. I know. Uh, he's a you, cop you from St. Louis, St. Louis I'm area. Much more spelled. <laughs> but he's usually on night shift, so he's never actually watched the show. Well, all right. so anyway, I totally interrupted you. He has poor vision, apparently. He has I like poor that. vision. I like that. <laughs> yes. Maybe if he would take his glasses off, I look a lot more like Pierce Brosnan. I just need to work on the accent. So anyway, you were saying opioids kill people in Iowa. They do. Get to work on that. Narcan uh -huh. is for everybody. Um, bad guys steal a lot of guns and hurt people with them in Iowa. Yeah. So get like putting those people in prison. Uh, you know, there's other things to worry about before. Oh my God, what will a permit holder do that looks like committing a violent felony in a school? Why don't we just worry about it once they start committing violent felonies? As in, anyone could. 
all of them could. Um, permit holders violate the law sometimes. Some of them are people like Lamar Wilson who have no convictions, so they have a permit, and then they go choose to do some really bad things. Uh, that's not going to make me judge all permit holders. It's a perfect, he's a perfect poster child for some people to say, look at what's wrong with the system, right? Like, look at all these permit holders so could do. How about the fact would that Would have anything would, that he did been prevented by anything that they could have done? Uh, you just said he didn't have a record. No, he had no convictions. He no, was, well, yeah, no, yeah, con yeah, no sure. convictions. No felony convictions. So how is any any law aimed at targeting people that are oh, criminals? Hey, hold on. You, know, you can't have laws about targeting certain people. Well, this based is based off what the fact. This they is have where a I'm going to expose. This is where I'm going to expose their entire are agenda. Are we about? Which, to, are we about to go into somewhere we didn't even talk about? Well, no, I'm just going to expose their entire Ooh. agenda, right? Okay. So they can talk about responsible gun ownership and and laws and keeping it out of the hands of the criminals and everything else. That all sounds real good. Mm -hmm. And I agree that absolutely. I mean, you'd be, have to be a moron to want to have firearms in the hand of criminals or people that shouldn't have them. However, it exposes their entire agenda when they think that more laws are going to stop a guy like Lamar Wilson. Mm -hmm. What they really mean is total confiscation. Yeah. They don't want any guns out there yeah. at all. I mean, and that's what they want. That's bold, Cotton. That's very bold. That's what they want. <laughs> no, I mean, there, there's a lot of them that, yes. They try to, when like, people think they try not to, like, say it because they don't want to offend people like oh, you and yeah. me. They don't want to. They, they sugarcoat it and soft nope. it, but it's for the kids. Yeah. Hey, I have more, I have uh, more respect for the ones that just say, yeah, I want all the guns gone. I don't even want you to have guns. I would rather them have the internal fortitude to say that, right? Say it, intestinal. Just be fortitude. intestinal. Yeah. Just, just say, hey, I don't want you to have guns. Then great. At least I know where you stand. But don't act like you're, hey, I'm a gun owner, so I support you, yeah. but I don't support you because I don't trust you because I'm not like you because I don't really actually hang around with any of you or know anything about you really other than what I also read on the media that the sky is falling because we went to shell issue. And be look at all the wild, wild west shootings we've had since 2011. Because you don't come from my background. Yeah. So you're not as smart as me. So I must have to make decisions for you. Yes. That is another like underlying thought process with the all king, these people. The king shall make it better for the us. The king shall make it better. Okay. Please, sir, may I have permission to use my own stuff? Okay. Can I have permission to use your bathroom again, Shane? Yeah. All right. So he's like a king. So yeah. it drives me nuts. They just need to get educated, and they can be offended by me, blah, blah, blah. Would I treat her well if she came to class? Would, Absolutely. Would she maybe see, hey, you know what? Some of these people, like, really go out of their way and take five-hour classes and know a lot more about carrying a gun and the responsibilities go with it than the politicians that want to write laws about it. I, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. That's... Do you ever see laws being passed about, like, medical stuff or law enforcement stuff by people who don't know what you know about it? Yeah. Why does that happen? Because they they just want to get their agenda pushed. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of like, you know, you don't even have to. And there's lots of people who don't like the current present. Whatever. I don't care. Um, there's people that didn't like the last one. That's fine. And, that, yeah. And the whole point is, all you know, all of those presidents, and people can get all revved up anyway if they will just shut up and listen for a minute. Every president out there has pretty much done a decent job, whether we like it or not, of surrounding themselves by people smarter than them. Which is what you should do. That's what you should, a good leader does. Yeah. And, and I loved it when people made fun of George Bush. They're like, he's the dumbest guy up there. Well, let's see. Did Even he though hire? he had a Harvard business degree, because yeah. dumb people get yeah. those. Yeah. And it's like, well, are you saying he hired a bunch of smart people to work for him? Because I don't know, that works out pretty well if you're like a business. I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. About George Bush? Not specifically about the president, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. And current president, current president, but in general, the you presidency. Can say his name. The you can presidency, say his name, he won't show up. The real Donald Trump, okay, right? Yeah, well, the real Donald Trump, please stand up. <laughs> yeah, so say it three times, say he, shows it three up. times he shows up, it'll be bigly, <laughs> it'll be bigly. But uh, no, I was talking about the presidency, um, in general, yeah, and how it it's sad and irritating that it's become like we're talking about kingship, mm -hmm. like people treat him like a king, mm -hmm. like. You know, President Trump's going to do this, and, like, everything's going to be better. That's not how it works. See, I don't really hang around people that think that. There's, and I hang around some no, people that like him. No, there's a lot of him. people out there. There's, But there's, I mean, go back to high school, like, civics, yeah. government, right? Yeah. Three branches of government. They're all equal. Yeah. The president is not better than Congress or the judiciary. It's 
they're all equal. Yeah. And they all have a say. Yeah. And just because President Trump says something doesn't mean it's good or bad or the sky's going to fall or he's not the freaking king. Was the last president like that? People thought he was. I mean, just in general, mm -hmm. people think the president's got, or they give him, in my opinion, way too much power or credit. Yeah. Doesn't have as much power as people think. No, they don't. No. No. And it's funny because everybody wants to talk about how he'll do whatever he wants. Um, his whole travel ban thing hasn't been working out, right? He's no, in getting, fact, I think the courts, once again, because they're once equal. Once again. Once again, because they're yeah, equal, has said. blocked it or something. Yeah. 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 I, I've actually, for like the last year, despite what I just said, have kind of sworn off politics, and I don't really pay attention because it's just a bunch of hooey. Well, why are we talking about politics? I mean, if you I don't know. We just started. No, you, you said, got me fired up. All right. Well, is it because we're talking about House File 2086? Yeah, it's because we have ridiculous people you out there making people, ridiculous statements. Do you believe with people with permits should be able to drop their kids off of school? I think people with permits should be able to take firearms under the school grounds but that's not currently legal well yeah but i'm so you would support this yes so absolutely are you associate are you officially involved with a law enforcement agency yeah okay do you know any law enforcement friends at all honestly that you think i mean if we if we polled and that's the sad part in the facebook world how many cops you know don't even have their real name on facebook right quite a few yeah why so people don't track them down yeah i'm gonna have your badge i'm gonna kill your kids well, how many times do people say that yeah, stuff right, right? Yep. So, yeah, you want to make lots of friends in law enforcement? Tell them in the car that you're going to kill their kids when you get out of jail. Yeah. Try that. It's awesome. It happens. So, what's sad is how many cops you know can't speak out about how they really feel because it doesn't line up with maybe the command staff or even higher up the food chain? Quite a few. Mm -hmm. so, or they may have a social media policy that doesn't allow them. Oh, you mean, do you mean that law enforcement has to sign a social media policy that tells them what they can and can't do on social media? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. It's one more thing. I'm not even going to talk about having to like get shot at and shoot people and the kind of things that everybody armchairs quarterbacks about what these poor officers have to do. But how many people at their jobs, and I know they can say it isn't rare. I want to know how many people can answer me right now at Rockwell, at Raining Rose, at Quaker, at General Mills, at Evergreen, at, I don't know, Worley Warehouse around here. Name some other places. Big employers around here. Next Era Energy. Oh. How many of those people actually have to sign a social media contract at work saying, I understand the rules and I can't talk about this, this, and this? I'm not familiar with the policies at all those places, but I don't think that any job I've ever had, other than the ones where I've worked in the public sector, mm -hmm. What does had, public sector mean? Like you're working with the public, like public safety stuff, like mm -hmm. firemen, EMTs, cops, yeah. uh, military. So it's I've like, had to sign social media stuff for those organizations. So it's basically like they don't have their freedom of speech. No, you give away a, a lot of rights to mm -hmm. protect the rights of other people. How many times? Oh, yeah. How many times have we seen people that it doesn't even matter if I do or don't agree with some officer's opinion – it's him on his Facebook page talking about his own opinion, and he got fired for it. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Yep. yep. You want to go to, like, I don't know, you want to go to uh, the Dukes of Hazard rally and relive the 80s or whatever and stand next to a car with a with a Confederate flag and say, I loved General Lee, that really shouldn't cost you your job in law enforcement. No, it shouldn't. No. Not if you're I mean, not promoting racist, whatever. Like if you're just standing by a flag, okay, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't mean you go to work tomorrow and treat anybody any differently because of it. Right. So, but, and you know what? There's other people that have, they have a hard time understanding that people can do that. They can separate their personal feelings when they're at work. You know? That's once again, it's an agenda, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody is too stupid. So I must make a decision for you. Yes. So you can't, you can't, separate your personal and your private your private and your professional life sure so i must have to make decisions for you because you're too dumb to do it for yourself there's a lot of that going on there's a huge amount of that um this country is just swimming in it is With, it even swimming or is it pretty much drowning it could be drowning okay it could be drowning we're doggy paddling we're doggy paddling partially yeah connected to a breathing machine all right other things we could go on forever. We, so, if, if we so in a nutshell, politics, watch the video. But Am Amber Gustafson is a ridiculous person. Yes, she is. Um, she might be the smartest, best person for the job ever in twenty other categories. But my problem is 
when you don't understand, and it's not all about, oh, you're a one subject person or any blah, 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 or you only care about this. No, what I care about is get educated about it before you speak on it, because everything you said sounds ridiculous if we apply it to people driving down the road or me staring at a crowd of people at an Iowa Hawkeye game. Where's the sign on them that tells you which one's a killer, which one isn't? And by the way, you know, that's for people that don't accept the fact. Guess what, Amber? With uh, 40% of the murders unsolved in Iowa, how many times have you walked by a murder in the mall and you didn't even know? They didn't have, like, the floating murder sign above them, right? No. How many rapists? How many child abusers? How many people that are off their meds that need to be on meds and so they're really not the normal person they should be? I say that lovingly. Like, when people go off their meds, do they get crazy? Does that happen in Iowa? Yeah, it happens. Yeah. So... Which one of the people have signs floating above their heads saying, skip my meds today, whether I want to bitch about the state of Iowa and healthcare and I couldn't afford it and didn't take it, or whether I just chose that, hey, I don't want those anymore. For all the other reasons you can come up with on why somebody didn't take their meds, it doesn't change what happens once they quit taking their meds. And there's no sign floating above their head that says, I'm going all the way today. Like, yeah. So the, the so get thought educated, that, Amber. Yeah, the thought that you can... Worry about first things fi- first. Yes, worry first about first things first. first. That's it. Yeah. First things first. Go worry about first things first. There's a bazillion Good things call. killing people faster than permit holders in Iowa. And people dropping their kids off at school is probably not highest on the list. Let's just be happy we have parents that take their kids to school. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heck of a step these days. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we got to nope. hit run, hide, fight. I, it's not in order. It's not in order. It's it not in order. It doesn't have to have an order. It doesn't have to have an order. Um, so I'm standing inside my kid's school. And, you know, after hours, the doors always lock. So when you're being like a loving parent, you have to kind of like open the door for the next parent and the next parent, right? Because it's an actor after school activity kind of thing. Like, let's say randomly it's uh, Washington High School football family meeting thing. So the door locks and they can't get in unless you open it for people. So open it for this guy and they come in. Hey, so-and-so, that's so-and-so's dad. Open it for this person. Open it for this person. Let's say like the fifth person I opened the door for because I opened the door for the other parents because I was locked out a second ago too, right? And someone mm-hmm. else, nice enough, let me in. So they step right inside. Hey, it's a family football meeting. I think I know all my son's, you know, friends, uh, players, parents. No, some dude just rails me, punches me, and knocks me unconscious, and I fall over or I, I stumble backwards. Let's say. What order do things go? And now there's like a violent person enters the. So when people say run, hide, fight, or whatever, it doesn't always happen in order, does it? No, I mean... I've been punched in the nose now. Should I try to run, or might Well, you I probably have... wouldn't in that in that case, especially if, I mean, you're natural. So let's talk, let's change that up. Though. Change it up. Let's say he points a gun in your face. <laughs> like, you let him in, and he's like, all right, motherfucker, because we can say what we want on the show. I, gotta, I like I it. Gotta, he just <laughs> dropped his first f bomb ever on CBO Gun no, Talk. No, it's not the first one. But oh. you got a gun in your face, right? Yeah. So I was once again doing some training, and there's another one of these myths out there. You know, this won't make it on Amber's feed now because now it's R rated. Uh, no, but he puts a little e explicit thing on there. It's okay. Do you do that? Yeah. E explicit. I cool. thought the e was for Ernie. No, oh. it's for explicit. It sucks. My speltness disappeared. Yes. So. You know, the, the training out there, it run, hide, fight's kind of been a, you know, the good thing is it's gotten into people, the, the public consciousness, sure. right? But there's a lot of, once again, myths out there that you have to do it in order. Like, first I must run, and then I must hide, mm-hmm. and then I must fight. Yeah. Like, they don't concentrate on the fight part, and I'm not concentrating on that either. Last thing we want you to have to do. Right. But it may be the first thing. That you have to that do. That you have to do. There's mm-hmm. not an order they have to put it in a linear order to get the concepts out, but whatever you call it, run, hide, fight, evade, barricade, respond, you know, whatever you call it, it it's based on your best guess of the current situation. You may in the situation you just talked about where a guy punches you or puts a gun in your face, you might fight. I might have to fight now. You might have to fight long enough to like, what if you don't overpower him, but you disengage? Now you run. Mm-hmm. But you, but wait a minute. I can't run all the way because he's standing in front of the only exit. So I have to run to a position of cover mm-hmm. where I'm going to barricade. And then I'm going to find some sort of something improvised weapon to arm myself with and continue to improve my position. Wait. And, and oh, my God, now he's away from the door. Now I can run out the door, right? So you just did fight, run, hide, barricade. Fight, Possibly run. fight, run. Yeah. It's based on your current predicament. Mm-hmm. 
your abilities and training. Limited options. Limited options, and it's ever evolving and improving. Running is always going to be the best option. Let me make that very clear. Running is always the best option, but it's not always the first option based on your situation. Yeah, and really by running, do you mean evade? Yeah. Get away. Get somewhere where the bad guy can't hurt you. Yeah. That's that's what evading running is. I get it. I just wanted to go there for yeah, simplicity. Yeah, sure. So, but it's not always like clear cut. Like I'm going to run all the way out the exit, right? No. But you I'm may not running with you may run in, across the country. You may run in steps. You may, like I said. So there's a concept in the military. Um, a lot of people that listen to us are probably. Oh, don't go over my head now. It's no, for all the military people. No, I'm sure that you you you've heard this before. Defense in depth. Like you'll have a primary defensive line, sure. secondary defensive line, tertiary defensive line, and conti- tertiary contingency. Holy cow. You knew that word over there, didn't you, Mister Airborne? Yeah, yeah, it's fancy. Yeah. So two but, airborne dudes in the same room. I am like way out of my. But uh, that's league here. that's what um, spelt that, means. That's, it, <laughs> I'm hung up on that word. Um. Yeah. But I'm a gun owner. Yeah. Anyway. Um, as a gun owner, and I'm not making light of run, hide, fight, but I, you know, we have to have fun once in a while. No, I'm just saying, my it's mind's not an still order, blown, right? You, we said can, you can't be the like F bomb. You can't run, hide, fight. No, you can't in always. that order and say, well, if I can't run, then I'm going to freeze mm-hmm. and not do anything. A lot of the bad information. I mean, let me say, no, not bad information. A lot of the false bravado out there is always people that are like, I'm going to do this, this, and this first, and it always involves engaging the person. Um, Sometimes a little bit harder than you think. So, I mean, as we always say in a lot of our classes, improvisation comes from lack of planning. Mm-hmm. So if you just use, there's a there's a 10-second rule that I, I tell people. Um, you walk in someplace and you do a quick casing of the place. Like you walk into your, into your, your football meeting, mm-hmm. you look for exits, mm-hmm. unconventional exits as well. Like are there like fire exits that they say don't go out, but if there's an active shooter in here, I'm going out that exit. Yeah. So you look for exits. You look for people that might harm you. Mm-hmm. You look for people that might help you. You look for people that are definitely not going to help you. And you mm-hmm. look for improvised weapons. Ten seconds. Do mm-hmm. it everywhere you go. Practice it. That doesn't make you psychotic? No. Makes you not freeze when the dude does show up with the gun in your face or you hear gunshots down the hallway. Because, hey, I can go out this door because I know beforehand that that so, door is there. I'm Ernie, the super spelt guy from CVO that owns a gun store. How do you get normal Americans that aren't like me? And when I say normal, they don't do what I do. They don't hang around the people I do. How do you get people to understand what you just said isn't weird? That, you know, it, people can laugh, but it's like your old, you know, when I say your old shirt, all these army guys, I like all the whole thing, you know, be polite, be professional, I have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Um, it's more true than not true. And what I mean is, if you walk into every situation, like you said, first of all, how do I get out of here? And if right. I couldn't get out of here, uh, how would I fight? And hey, if it if I'm around people I somewhat knew, who do I think I could possibly count on? Which sometimes can you not count on those people? Absolutely. I mean, this is do all change like when... plans change, but you got to have a plan. Sure. So if, like if you and I were like hanging right, out in hanging out in this mystery guy airborne guy's basement, right? So studio studio. Um, you know, I think I could count on you, but maybe at the moment where the rubber heats, meets the road one maybe of us can't. maybe we change our mind maybe right? fat dude ernie that's not spelt has a heart attack falls over yeah. i'm no good to you or maybe you're not in the position to help cuz the chair is in your way and yeah. now i'm on my own right mm-hmm. um so yeah you plan but you can't count on you can have my medical gear on my ankle chain and my firearm that i now think i'm allowed to carry cuz he told me last time i could yeah we had that talk we had that talk yeah yeah so so we got a we got a couple of questions. So fire away, man. So Chris, I have other things. Not the same, Chris. Yeah, right? the one that's he's your fan. I don't know whether to really trust his questions because he called me svelte. So we already know his judgment's poor. Well, he vision. makes a good point though. He says what they never teach is that taking a moment to identify the threat. He mm-hmm. says my friend was teaching his daughter to always run, and I tried to explain that you need to ID the threat before you act. Exactly. Yeah. You need to process information who the bad guy is and and you're gonna do it right you're not just gonna like we don't run every time we hear a loud noise no you're you, gonna be you, like what what was people that? can think what they want but if you walked inside the entrance of a school and that and people go like, oh my god he's talking about the bad guy if a bad guy walks inside the entrance of a school and just ripped off three rounds people do not one half second later with a lack of processing information 
take off running in some other direction. Not only that, even more realistic, how many of those people, they based, go to look. Based, based on the demographic of who works in schools, okay. even know what that sounds like? Well, and they go and investigate it. Like, yeah. I think that was gunfire. Let me go see. Because I've never heard gunfire, so I can't really believe it is gunfire, move, so it must be something else. Move toward the light. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you're going to have that happen. Sure. You know? Your brain wants to know things. Yeah, and, and people are like, there's other things. Like, you don't want to, like, who are you responsible for? They can't maybe yeah. run away from, if they're a third grade teacher, they're not going to abandon their classroom. Sure. So options to run may be limited. Sure. Um. Yeah, it's it's not a linear process. That is the point I'm making. You can't just say always run when that's not realistic. Yeah. That's just like saying we treat every gun as if it's loaded, which is a ridiculous rule because uh you don't treat it like it's loaded when it's a part laying on the table. You right? Blasphemy. Right? You, if you have a Glock, like like your hat, right? Mm-hmm. And you're cleaning it, you still have to manipulate the trigger to take it apart, right? Wait, you mean I pull the trigger in my basement? Yeah. yeah. So you obviously didn't ex- actually treat it like it was loaded at all didn't times. Didn't treat it like it was loaded at all times. No. So it's and people will say, yeah, I did. I pointed at the table. I'm like, do you shoot your table at? Yeah, yeah I do. I believe that about you. Right. So at some point, <laughs> you realize intellectually that it's not a loaded weapon, so you're not treating it that way. Understood. And just like you can't always run. And if you say you can always run, you're you're not being realistic. No. You can't run when you get shot in the leg. And if you don't have a tourniquet, you might bleed out. You might. But if you use a tourniquet, you might lose your leg. Come on, don't go pause on me. I'm no, going to go to these at, topics. I'm looking at some of these pictures. Well, or pictures, pictures of what? Questions, I'm saying. I'm looking at some questions. <laughs> hey, Sandy's looking at pictures. I'm looking at pictures. I mean, is it, I mean, you've already dropped a MF bomb. Do you want to share the pictures so on Matt, there, too? Matt going wants all the to way? know. Uh, who, Matt who? I can't Matt say Wilson? this. No, Matt. he's got this weird ass Facebook name. He wants to know how. Well, that, about that sounds your... insulting. Uh, it's not insulting. He did it. He did it on okay. purpose to not get his identity. Okay. Identity. All right, I know which one you're talking about. What's he say? He says, "How about your com? How about you comment on the oddest things that have walked through your doors?" I'm assuming he means the store, like rarest, Wait least a minute. value, neatest. Most did of the he stuff. say that? No, rarest? No, he said. Well, no. So when you say what's the rare? Oh, yeah. okay, valuable. He's talking about a firearm. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm a. I'm a yeah. Oh, I'm assuming oh man, are you store. ready? Yeah. It's not what people think. What is it? Well, uh, well, for like right now, hey, he was asked, it a blunderbuss? No. Oh, okay. I had one of those. That's not that rare. Had really? a lot of people. Really? Oh, and and old converted, you know, old converted muzzle loaders into uh, shotguns, you know, from the Zulu wars. Uh-huh. Literally, the African Zulu Wars, the, you know, things that's that... That's like p- late 1800s, man. That's a long time ago. Those are not rare. Usually see maybe... I, maybe it's not one a year anymore. I used to see more than one a year. So there's things that are rare to most people that come in, you know, that you see that, first of all, when people are like, why didn't you buy it? Because everything we sell, that's Cedar Outfitters, everything we sell, we warranty it. So I don't sell like relics or things that might break and it costs me four times you know, what the gun costs for to fix it for you. Yeah, like makes sense. We fix everything we sell forever as long as you've left it alone and you don't think you're a gunsmith because you read a Brownells book. So uh, here's a factual answer for you. Anybody that kind of follows me on Facebook, I can tell you right now the rarest gun I've ever seen in my store, literally the rarest, is sitting there right now. Well, no, actually, it sold yesterday. What was it? It was uh, a Marlin Model 3822. And people can say, well, that's not rare, blah, blah, blah. All I'm telling you is, I started selling guns full-time, worked at Shields in 1997. Um, I've sold guns full-time for a living since 1997. Uh, If you just count Cedar Valley Outfitters, that's almost 50,000 firearms, plus all the ones I sold when I worked for Finn and Feather and Shields. I've handled that many firearms in my life and never seen a Marlin Model 3822. Is it anything special or dramatic? No. Why are they so rare? They just didn't make a lot of them? They made them for 10 years. They didn't make a lot of them, and they made them from 1920 to 1930. And people didn't buy guns for show back then. They, they held on you, to you, them. You, well, you shot squirrels. You shot rabbits. You yeah. took it with you in the field. But, you know, 20 of them are probably somewhere rusted into a tree where great-grandpa leaned it to take a pee and forgot it, right? Yeah. Why he was drunk and why he was driving his carriage. There wasn't a big sign floating above his head that says, careful. I have a firearm. I'm a drunken carriage driver, Amber. So... Um, nostalgic, the number one nostalgic thing, I don't know, it pretty, pretty simple for me. Um, here, I'm going to try to tell this story really fast. This is Matt's fault. Blame him. We Ready? Got, we got time. 
Okay. In, tell, tell where. in 1974, my dad traded his Remington Rand 1911 that um, he brought home from Vietnam. So he, he had had it for years. But in 1974-ish right in there, he traded it to a local buddy and traded it. And for anybody listening that would ever know my dad, which would be very few people, he was one cheap-ass son of a bitch. So he traded. Frugal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Cheap ass son of a bitch. Okay. So he traded a 1911 Remington Rand. Now, granted, in the early 70s, you didn't care. Two years before that, you were buying them for $30 as an NRA member from the you know, surplus. Back when the NRA was actually helping gun owners? Did I say that out loud? Did you hear that logic oh. bomb drop? Wow. Wow. So, touche, and I like it. So, he... Uh, Traded that for like a Mark One Ruger, you know, looks like a Luger, sure. Ruger 22, yep. pew pew, to save money because he just wanted a, a handgun that was cheaper to shoot. So, long story short, fast forward to like, uh, oh, geez, 2008 or 9, 10, somewhere in there. I start working on because I know who owns it. Like, and my, my father passed away in 2005. And after that, I kind of wanted to get my gun back. And when I say my gun, my father's gun, right. I had already tried for years before that. And my dad, who you had to know was frugal, literally would said, and he called me Ernest when he was pissed off. He's like, Ernest Traw, if you spent more than a nickel on that gun, I'll be mad as hell at you. Because to him, it was a useless, crappy, rattly piece of junk. Piece of metal. And it was a rattly hunk of metal because that's what old military 1911s are like. So um, the funny thing is it had zero sentimental value to him. But, you know, hey, I'm a dude that you want your dad's gun, right? Right. So... I spent years trying to buy it back. I factually, absolutely, nobody's going to ever get back to the right guy. But hey, Tom, if you ever end up listening to this podcast, yes, I'm talking about you, Tom, and you know it. I even went and found a really nice Remington Rand, 1911, that was exactly like my dad's, and offered a thousand extra dollars cash. Guy didn't want to trade. So it's like, dude, you won't give me my dad's gun back. And it's not my gun, right? Fair trade back in whatever. So I, I, I gave up on this. No, it's not a Tom that follows us there at all. No, 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 no. This Tom won't be on Facebook. He taught me how to fly planes, though. Super cool dude. Long story short, I'm like, I give up. I'm frustrated. It's like, I, I think you're just being a douche. You won't sell me back my dad's gun, you know? So I, And he knows it's my dad's gun. They were very, very good friends. So lesson learned to me. Sometimes people just want to do things on their own schedule, and they'll do it when it's important to them. That dude walked into my store years later, which was only about five years ago said you still want your dad's 1911 i'm like you know duh uh, yeah. yeah duh yeah. yeah and i'm like what do you want for it how can we do it what do you want to do and he's like i want to trade you for that gun right over there and he took like a 500 hundred dollar gun and trade which was kind of a point of you know it, it wasn't about the money i kept offering more money or thinking it was that when it was just like hey it's his gun and when he was ready to get rid of it he got rid of it so that's the gun that sits in my uh display case display case yeah so i would say sentimental wise it's cool um nostalgic sure but rarest gun you, you know factually when you talk about rare guns all you can do is say how many of them were made you know and even the marlin model 38 that i say somebody can come back and say well that guy's a dumbass they made eight thousand of them all i'm telling you to do is i've never seen one i have never seen one in my life until last week when it walked in the door so you know there's goofy things like i i have that 28 gauge bolt action uh shotgun that looks like a handgun that's goofy that mm -hmm. I, I want to get a letter from Springfield. I think the previous guy, they made like 21 of them. So, wow, they're super rare by numbers, but who wants a 28-gauge bolt action? Yeah, pretty Mauser? limited use. Yeah. If you love rabbit hunting from your car and violating game laws, it's for you. <laughs> That's yeah. the gun for you. Yeah. Yep. I want the if guy If you want to be on the, on the next episode the... of Northern Woods Cops. Yes, because they have that sign that floats above their car that yeah. says, I like to road hunt and do things illegal, right? <laughs> Amber told me about them. So anyway, My is, mama there, says, is there any other legitimate questions from yeah, Matt I can there's answer? A, there's a few other ones. Um, let me go through here. One more thing, if you ever want it. There's a couple guys. So in my uh, in my lifetime of buying and selling guns, or in when I say mine, I bought it, I sold it, whatever. Um, not too many followers are old enough to remember who uh, Bart Simpson and, and Skeeter Skelton were, you yeah. know, father and son. Yeah. And way back when, before like semi-automatics were a thing, and what I mean by that is you had a, um, we had a Browning High Power that was owned by their family. Which are no longer being manufactured. No longer being manufactured, and I don't blame them whatsoever. But anyway, let the hate begin. I have a huge uh, emotional contact with it's the Browning awesome. High Power. It's a cool gun. I'll Not tell you something I would sometime. ever carry, but it's a cool gun. 
but they used to never have adjustable sights. Or when and, and when people, when I say never, you go back to World War II and say, well, my I have an artillery bottle, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about what the cool dudes used to do in their day is they took Smith & Wesson adjustable revolver sights and had them milled in to fit the Browning high power slide. And it was pretty cool. And that's what this gun was. And it was all came from the family's auction and it was all documented. That would probably be like a famous person's gun, you know? Yeah. Um, I actually, I I bought and sold the gun collection that was Charlie Sheen's when he couldn't own guns anymore because he got, you know, like how many times has he been convicted of domestic? I don't know, but this time he was. So he couldn't own guns. He sold them. He gave them and slash sold them to a local person that was possibly in the NBA that's from this area that was Charlie Sheen's buddy. And then I bought them from him. So when we opened those guns up, they still had white sand fall out of them. And the person's story was, yeah, well, you know, he couldn't own guns anymore. So we went out on the beach and we shot them all one last time. So I, I literally believe that story because I know what white sand from the beach looks like. Sure. And it poured out of the actions of this old car 15, mm -hmm. like the old school special forces. Yep. When you didn't have to carry a musket and you were a badass. Tiger stripes. There you go. So that would be like famous person's guns. And I don't care. Like, oh, yay. I got to buy your gun collection because you beat up women. Uh, not cool. Not cool at all. So ask me if I'm better questions. So, Shane, can you put, because it's hard for me to see. Yeah, this I can actually can, read them off. Everybody read can them or off you can right read them now. off can, yeah. or put them up on the screen, sure. whatever. Do they hear you sure. now, Shane? They do. Do it. Uh, Chris Sparks actually, uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to hey, Jason Clark. Hey, he used Clark. to live here. Jason, Jason Clark. Clark. Yeah. Uh, back to what we were talking about earlier. Who's going to be our guest on next Is episode? Is that the Jason yeah. Clark? Yes. Parents of small children are a big category of people who often not actually being able to run away. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who are just listening to this and can't understand <laughs> Ernie's mumbles, <laughs> Jason Clark says parents what of I small said was, children I'm are super svelte. <laughs> a big category of people who often don't have the luxury of being able to run away from every threat. Same so, goes for those who are caretakers of special needs. So go people. back and uh, put that where applicable. Run, hide, fight. Sometimes based on your situation. Based on your situation. And, and Jason's absolutely correct. Like yeah. I said, who are you, who are you responsible for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Chris Sparks. Chris says, Sparks. Welcome, Chris Sparks, from wherever you're at, because you used to live here and you moved away. Taking combat-focused shooting with you guys helps make you humble in the I'll take the fight to the active shooter mentality. Actually, including realistic movement and quick response manipulation drills helps you see how challenging getting accurate shots are. So you know, that's, that's a good point. I mean, if you actually train to ask defend him, yourself, ask you find he, out that it's not as easy as you think it is. Ask so, him when he took that class. Is he live on there? Is it an old question? Uh, it's, no. You know, he just put it on there just a little bit ago. He literally might have been in your class, guy in the corner. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. I think but, Chris didn't take it that long ago before he moved. But, I mean, he's right. So you, you, when you start training, you find out how hard it is to actually make this stuff happen. And it makes you think twice about engaging or starting something or, or like you said, makes you more humble. Like, you're going to avoid and, more and, situations. And, and add in a whole bunch of processing of information. Right. Right. Like, is this worth it? My kids are with me. How do I get out of here? Yep. What if I have to go ahead and engage them because my kids are with me and I can't get out of here? Yep. A lot of shit to think about. Lots. I dropped the S bomb. How's that? S. Still pretty rebellious. Chris, Chris Sparks says May 2015, I believe. No, so, that was a long time ago. A couple. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Dave Cirillo asks, what is the cost of the permit class to just sit in and get the updated information for current? Twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. You Dave can, was in. My, Dave was in my paramedic class. Hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. I haven't seen him in a long time. But in your paramedic class of what way? Of what sort? What do you mean? Like in the class where I became a paramedic, Dave was one well, of the. Well, you got to explain that to us non paramedic. It's what? like you airborne guys like throwing three letter what? shit around. I never <laughs> I understand. I said paramedic class. Do you it's that like one a, time it's like two words. When the NCO did the RBI and the black, I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Well, the Gisoda, you see, you got to work about the Gisoda fin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. CIB patch. CIB. I, I do have CIB one patch. Do you want me to go into that? CIB patch. Do you have a CIB patch? No, I don't. Why? Don't you well, get it when you're like airborne badass dude no, like you are? No, 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 no. You got to. No. You have to you earn have, it. You have to be in a combat. Wait, Com it's can they hear you talk? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So former combat infantry. But there's I'm, lots of guys that don't. Well, have no, no. I understand. Hold on. I'm not being a smart ass. You literally are army airborne, right? Yeah. I get to say that. Yeah. And what like group or badass industry kind of person were you? Was it 82nd, 75th? I was in the 82nd Airborne. Okay. So super cool, legit guy. Way more legit than Ernie. Right. So he doesn't have a CIB patch. It's no. not. It's not. I don't even have my EIB. Okay. So I told you. What's about an that, EIB? Right? EIB is expert infantry badge. 
Were you even listening when I ranted about no. this earlier? <laughs> I actually remembered every single word. Yeah, I know. So my question to you happen. is, somewhat younger guy than Mike, no offense, mm-hmm. Mike, somewhat younger guy from Mike, but still old school guy by a lot of people's records. Um, do you respect people with a CIB badge? Did you back then? Ba- badges to me don't earn respect. Okay. Wow, I like it. Let me rephrase the question. Yeah. Is it something... Hey, we got some army shit going out no, here. No, I'm just I'm saying, like... is it something that people value that earned it i i mean i definitely feel like it's difficult to get certain yeah. things so i appreciate the effort in which it put in to get it but i think also other badges are because you're uh, you were a part of something a bigger group and you didn't necessarily have an option not to do it some people would say that sounds like a bitter dude. So, so where, where it, this where this all comes from, and I and I no, think, really, because there is other cool patches to have, right? There's other cool things to do in the military that count. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's I, absolutely there's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So, but where this all came from, and I'm gonna go ahead and go rant, ahead. rant about it, it since you brought it up because I um, bet you won't rant like you really did inside the breakfast. House. Uh, yeah, I probably won't. Bring it on. But so the combat infantry badge. It, let's just let's just. I think we can all agree that it is meant to be um, an award for a select few people. I don't right? know. I don't know shit about it, so, so I'm listening. I'm just telling you. Okay. It's supposed to be an award. It was established in 1942 mm-hmm. to try to recruit more infantry guys because mm-hmm. during World War II, infantry guys were getting slaughtered. Okay. So they're like, well, if they join the infantry and they participate in combat, we'll give them this badge. They'll feel a little bit more elite. We'll get more... Um, People to sign up. More to people get to sign up. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that's the evolution of it. Um, everybody doesn't get one, as Shane said. I mean, I didn't. I have one, but I didn't get one for the first fifteen years I was in the military. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to meet certain criteria. So once again, it's a small group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, they have the expert infantry badge, which is a test, mm-hmm. which is also very difficult. Um, but you have to be in the infantry to get either one of these things. So you have to be – you've already had to get to a certain point to be get one of these things. Um, they have the extra bird field medical badge and the combat field medic. So medics and infantry guys get special awards for doing stuff. Okay. Anyway, 2005, the uh, Army decided that everybody else, their self-esteem was low. Mm-hmm. And we're going to institute the combat action badge. Okay. So CAB. A- CAB. So everybody, I mean, from the water purification guy to whatever your job is. You gotta have water. All they're all important jobs. All right. Gets a badge for being overseas. Okay. Okay. And now they're starting to implement a expert soldier badge. I just have a problem. I see this is the part that's the so right. That's ESB. Yeah, the, or whatever they're gonna call it. I don't know. Okay. They haven't decided, but this is the problem i have this is where the everybody gets a ribbon generation is now getting in a leadership position this is where the you know kind of the chickens are coming home to roost we're no longer going to have elite units or elite things or things to aspire to because well everybody should get it because we don't want anybody to feel bad Hmm. How how do you feel i mean is it similar to when they changed it to where you're not wearing field caps anymore for everybody everybody gets to wear a black beret yes exactly that was when Sinsheki, General Sinsheki, I think I said his name right. I can spell it. I just can't say it. Decided that the Rangers, this, who have this, historically this, had you, the black you, you beret, you pushed a button here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. When, it pushed my buttons. When yeah, it, all right. When it so the Rangers have had historically had the black beret since the Vietnam War, mm-hmm. and he took those away and gave them to the Army as a whole, mm-hmm. and gave the Rangers sand color, whatever they want to call it, to. Build the esprit de corps, everybody else. You know what happens when you try to just give somebody something they haven't earned? It does nothing. They don't value it. Mm-hmm. They don't value it. I understand that. It's well, it wasn't in the military, but I understand that. It, you apply that to anything. Anything you didn't earn, you don't value. Nobody cares. And that's the mentality that we're starting to see. Um, it's it's leaked. Starting to leak into the military because, like I said, some of these people are now well, not just getting leak. into leadership positions. I, I and... like how you described it this morning. Is you're 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 a couple levels deep there. Yeah. Yep. Did you know that the it, leave no they... child behind people are in charge of the everybody gets a yeah. trophy people, which is uh, now we need special ribbons. 
Did you know that the that goes uh, for the, whole the Marine Corps just oh yeah stopped using the obstacle course as a go no go criteria for the infantry officer basic course? How do you think Matt Wilson feels about that? I think Matt Wilson does not like that. Yeah, but I didn't mean to introduce him to your page the other day when I said Matt. He gave you a compliment, and anytime you invite Matt into a conversation, there's going to be a flurry of swear words. Sure, but uh, I mean. That's yeah. right. That's right. I, you know him. That's right. I do. Yeah. I did. I did some research, yeah. and they stopped using the obstacle course as a no go, no go. Like a like you're not going on any farther in this course if you can't pass it. Yeah. Because why? Would a svelte guy like me not quite make it? No, you wouldn't. But that's my problem, right? Yeah, I know. That's my problem with it because they Thanks, did it. One Mike's and I'm blind gonna, friend. I'm going to piss off fifty percent of your viewers. Here. It's okay. They did it specifically because females were not passing it. One female passed it. Yeah. One. I, you can say it the way it is. Okay. It's not like an opinion. You're so basing it off why one, they did it. One female passed it. They stopped it so they get more females to get through this obstacle. Yep. Because they, the political agenda is they want female infantry officers, and they're going to make it happen no matter what anybody thinks. Okay. But my problem with that is, you know, the Taliban, you know, Hello, mm. we're the Taliban. No. They don't care if you're male or female. They care whether you can do the job. And if we're not training people correctly, and if we're giving them a ribbon, like like use yourself as an example, if you couldn't make the obstacle course, I don't I want don't, you out there either. I don't get a ribbon. Because what if I get shot And I'm supposed face, to drag you? And you're supposed to drag me. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm probably just going to spoon you because you're done, buddy. Yeah. You don't get Medal of Honor. I'll put for, a tourniquet. You don't get the Medal of Honor for spooning, buddy. I will put a tourniquet on your face and try my best. <laughs> All right, so I'm done. I will sit by I'm you done. till the end of time and just spray brass randomly everywhere, and we can go out together. Yeah, people, I'm not dragging people have your done, ass. People have done that. I will. I'm not people dragging your ass, that. but I'll stay there with you. Yeah. Yes. So I'm just saying that the that lowering sound. of the standards, which they say is not being lowered, because they use a lot of politically correct terms to say, oh, we reevaluated, and I love it when you rip on the military because you, know, you you have the right to do that. It's one of those things I step Everybody aside. has the right. Once again, well, this no. is America. We can do what we want. Yeah, well, you can, but I mean, it, and you're right. Everybody has a they. Everybody has a right to say that's a bunch of crap. They're making it way too easy. But you know what? I never. I was never in the military. So and I'll every, let you and everybody's going to say, you know, everybody thinks they had the last hard. And I'll fully admit that, you know, I probably had it easier than the guys in World War II. Oh, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, how many died in training alone? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Right? Thousands. I think we just kind of went over the line. I yeah. mean, there's a there's a fine line between being smart and just being wimpy. Mm-hmm. So. Get those gutter guards up when you bowl in the military right now. Yeah, yep. gutter guards. Yeah, we don't want you getting a... We have, what do they call it? I, I mean, I've been out for a while, so I don't know the, the diversity and... and Touchy feely training, inclusion, inclusion training. Inclusion training. We don't need training. You know what the best diversity training is? Beating the hell out of each other with those broomsticks like they used to with yes. the pads on the end. Hanging out with the dude. Hanging out with the dude in Pineland. Of land. a different race. In Pineland. Of a different okay. of a different culture. Yeah. And from a different place in the United States. And when you said spooning, yeah. that shit happens when you're freezing to death. Well, yeah, you are freezing. That's to diversity, right? Sure. Sure. That's when you get to know somebody. When you're in a life and death situation, mm -hmm. and all that other bullshit goes out the window, that's how you. That's how you get cohesive units. You can't force that crap. No. When you share in the suck. Yes. When you share in the suck, yeah. you can't give everybody a ribbon and say, "Now you're a leader." Here is your black beret and your expert soldier badge. Yeah. Now go forth and do great things. They don't care. They don't care. It's not valuable. This is totally way off track. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, what, Shane's got a scary Matt, look on his Matt face. Matt Mashide. Okay. Matt something. Okay. Uh, Remington's bankrupt. Yeah. Any thoughts? Yeah, they're going to go out of business. That's my <laughs> thoughts. Um, I, I'm not being a smart ass. You, you don't file for restructuring. Let me let me put it to you. For all those people that talk about arrogant Ernie from CVO and he doesn't know shit, let me tell you what I do know. Every other gun company added together doesn't have enough money to pay off $950 million in debt. That's a lot of money. Not Smith & Wesson and Ruger, which Smith & Wesson's hurting enough, by the way, if you haven't noticed that they were served during the SHOT Show with their lawsuit for not paying off the other half of the $10 million that uh, they were paying for Crimson Trace. So the gun industry is sucking. They're sharing the suck. You could take all the most successful people that you guys think is awesome. You can say you think it's SIG. You can say you think it's whoever. They couldn't pull together all their assets in the whole wide world and pay off $950 million to save the Remington Outdoor slash Freedom Group slash 
shitty quality control for the last five, ten years. So never going to save them. They're going to go. Um, I think Rem- I, Remington's if, probably going to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, if I'm wrong, good for them. But you know what? It, just like people won't – when I say people won't care, I'm not being woe is me. Uh, maybe Cedar Valley Outfitters doesn't last forever in this industry. You know, maybe so and so goes out of business. Maybe well, I go out God of business. God forbid you ever retire someday. Uh, my idea of retire will be the heart attack we talk about. So there, nobody that my age that owns a gun store retires. That's a joke, unless you already like, you know, had family money or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. There's no retiring I, I for any quotes. Retire as in you just decide to quit working. I'm not saying you're comfortable. I will quit living that. on a beach. But... Oh yeah. No. No. Like I'll quit this industry someday. Yeah. Someday. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that right now on the show. Yeah. Um. Uh. Way better ways to make money. So that being said, you can't save Remington. It's not going to happen. And when people, you know, people are like, oh, there's no way they're going to let such an iconic place go out of business. Nobody gives a rat's ass. I mean, if you're if you're really full of integrity in the gun world, you want good quality products out. And if they made good quality products lately, no. Their pistols are a joke. How many things didn't work? They can't even make an 870, right, that's been out since, like, what, 1957? It's, it's almost like the movie industry, right? So I see a lot of the new up and coming things at SHOT Show and all these other places are really just remakes of old ideas. Mm -hmm. Like all these movies they're making. You you brought this up just because Death Wish is coming back out? (laughs) Tell me you did. (laughs) Yeah, no. But there are a lot of movies that are being remade like and and worse than the original. This one will be better than the old one even. Nobody can beat Charles Bronson. Dude, I understand that actually I'd rather watch the Charles Bronson because he's a more believable badass. If you look at if you look at pictures of him from when he was like in his thirties He just exudes manliness. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got the mustache, Mm -hmm. friggin', like, his shoulders are, like, this friggin' wide. Yeah. Like, and he's just like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. No, he's a cool dude. Don't get me wrong. There's there's people from yesteryear that they're never going to duplicate. But, I mean, here's the thing is modern technology and cinematography and all that is going to make the new one cooler. That's what's going to happen. More gory, you mean. Which is not always cooler. No. Yeah, and maybe it will be more gory. Yeah, because it didn't... The old school ones weren't gory, if you really think no. about it. There's no exploding headshots and stuff like when that. When they showed him shooting people, they kind of cut away. Sure. But that's what makes movies good, when you have to use your own imagination. Absolutely. I understand. It's not all like, you know, what was the Dogs of War? Which one was the... There's a lot of good old movies. Yeah. Anyway, back on task. Remington. Shane, other questions? Remington. Remington. You're never going to save them. That's my two cents worth. Um... You know, hey, have you ever read stories or heard that I'm arrogant? Remember when Jesse Lennox was with us? The Ox. You're out there somewhere. Yes. I liked it when Jesse's like, yeah, I, you know, a lot of people told me to come see you, but a couple guys said you were an asshole. It's, it was funny after uh, he got to know me. He's like, oh, you mean you just told him, like, the way it is? Like, that's the way it is. And some people think telling him the way it is, it's being mean. But when you're talking about, let's put that in context. Like, hey, does my butt look big in these jeans? That's like sometimes it's okay to lie about that, right? That's a trap question. Trap question. So, um, hey, should I trust my life to this Taurus? Uh, no, I'm gonna give you an honest answer. And and by the way, if that offends you right now, maybe I'll show you a couple of letters. Um, I think I got a couple yesterday from Hey, we received your product. That would be Taurus. We received your product you sent in, by the way, because I pay to send the customers guns back when they don't work. So really by the time you sell a Taurus and make forty dollars profit. You spend 35 of it, plus my employee's time, to send it back to Taurus. I'll, I'll put that letter So up. in a nutshell, It'll you're, be back in you're, 12 you're weeks. probably paying Taurus to sell their stuff. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So not my favorite company anyway. But anyway, really gave them a shot. Tried again. Losers. Uh, Remington. Remington sucks. 870s, they suck. Sent back a whole bunch of them. People are like, mine never had a problem. I, I love it. That's cool. But you got to remember, I don't own just one. I, I have one. I've used one as a deer gun a couple years. I've owned 10 different 870s. Only one of them was bad. But I have sold thousands. And then you have a lot of bad ones. And when you sell thousands of something and even 20 people, only 20 people come back, and it's a turd and it doesn't work, and it really doesn't work, like it's not the customer short stroking it, it's a turd of a gun, that's a problem. Yeah. If you can't build a 1,000 of something and have them all work flawless, that's bad. So Remington's going to go bye-bye. So unless George Soros saves it, so let's just wait and see. S- Segway. Yeah. Remington's eight seventies. Eight seventies. Yep. Oh god, yeah. Segway. Thousands. Ready, Segway. Yeah. So Jack wants to know what your opinion is on three eighty as a defensive caliber. There's nothing wrong with three eighty. Yeah. Puts holes in people, makes them bleed out. Yeah. Um, there. Hey, you know, Greg Elifitz and a lot of the other people. Um, 
I'm not going to argue with it. Well, I'll have a different opinion, whatever. There's a lot of people that say once you go down to 380, they're shooting hardball, round ball, call it whatever you want, truncated cone even. Um, they're even out there like promoting Underwood and some other things that say you still need that penetration to get the through and through. Or with, to, to, with with pressures and, and velocities that they got coming out with some of the newer technology, it, don't you think the 380 is starting to approach a 9 millimeter no, in performance? No, it's really not. But it perform, But it doesn't have to. People that say, oh, that's a joke. I'm never going to carry one. You know, oh, you have a J-frame. You have a .355 diameter bullet that weighs about 115 grain, some of it only 90 grain, some of it as much as 124, whatever, and it generates a whopping 215 foot-pounds energy. You have a revolver 380 is what you have. Yeah. But they'll make front of a 380. So I would take a Glock 42 over a J-frame any day because I go up two rounds in capacity and the gun's thinner. And when people say, oh, blasphemy, I love J Frame Smiths. That's cool if you're willing to train with them, by the way. Not, here's a gun you never train with. It's great for your little hands. Mm, Ask nine advice. But so there's nothing wrong with the 380. I agree with people like Greg Elephants, and I don't know, somebody else I re read lately was talking about you, you better understand shot placement. Like, you know, to me, a 380 is I'm not going and trying to save the day. Now, first of all, we don't tell people, I'm not going through the mall looking for the active shooter, am I? No. That's ass nine. We already said that. You're running if you can. Yeah. Because you identified that exit. Yep. But there's always the circumstances. Like I tell people, just like in class when we talk about the school deal, uh, I teach people, welcome to class, Amber. I teach people how you can already legally go on school grounds with a firearm. It's 100% already legal if you do it the right way. And if that's mind-blowing to any of you out there, it's because you didn't pay to come to my class. So it's already legal for a person to be on school grounds with a gun if you transport it the right way. Now, you load that gun up, which takes like two seconds, literally. You load the gun up and start in, uh, you've committed a felony. Why would I ever do that? Um, well, if somebody starts shooting kids in a school grounds, are you going to maybe step out of that, you know, where you're just protecting Mike and your own? Can you stand by and watch somebody execute school children? No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't either. So that's where I tell people, my choice for that isn't a 380, but would I try to use a 380 to do it? Hell yeah, because I'd try to use a baseball bat to do it. I would try to use my car to do it if somebody was executing kids. So when some people flat out say, my 380 is really just a self-defense gun, I would never go on the offensive with it. People say shit like that in a gun store, right? When are, when are you going on an offensive? Like, Yeah, when, are, yeah, when, are you, when is that going to happen? Rambo. Yeah. So, um, but... To be fair, Did you first blood? let's say one out of 100 people, to be fair, when I say, what does that mean? They're like, well, you know, 20 kids trapped inside a bus and I see a guy raking it with AK fire. I'm not just going to stand. OK, that I'll take that answer. If you want to call that going on the offensive, because you're going to go try to engage a guy with a rifle with your 380. And you know what? I'm not going to make fun of you. You tried to help a bunch of people that really probably had no other chance. Right? I might use my car at that point. Yeah, somebody's car, hand grenades, whatever, airsoft, I don't care, something, throw, to, you know, something. <laughs> throw punch. Yes, throw punch. So long story short, I'm totally okay with a 380, especially if you carry it all the time, everywhere, you train with it, you're proficient with it. But how many people carry 380s you've seen in class that they don't operate well? Not the gun doesn't work, they don't operate it well. Quite a few. Yeah, Ruger LCPs and things like that. It's yeah. actually an absolutely reliable gun. I have one. Yep. But it's hard for most people to run that gun. But does it still do what it's designed for? Hell yeah. yeah. Like, you know, Ernie's really boring. I tell people, if you can acquire your LCP quickly, if you can get to it, deploy it efficiently, and shoot a paper plate 10 feet away, that's pretty much what the gun – that's good job. Hey, it works. But You know, Mike, he gives us a hard time about our three-letter – uh, yeah. No, you told me. But what, yeah. what's a, what's a, what did you just say? You acquire your LCP. What? LCP. What's a, what's a LCP? Little compact pistol, lightweight oh. compact pistol. Okay. It's actually a model pistol. He knew, like a Ruger LCP. Because I a, have one. It's like saying Ford Taurus. So I just you don't have one, <laughs> but we'll bring one for Shane next time. We'll talk about it. Yep. Do you have your LCP on you right now? It's not on me. It's in the car. <laughs> Why you keep asking me, man? These that's like asking like like. What kind of underwear are you wearing? You know, it's a little too much information, Wait, man. Can we talk about that? Well. Okay. 
Black Why Commando. Show everybody here. Yeah, wait, where is your thing? There's your camera. You can show everybody your death metal shirt. Uh, you know what's it. funny? It's because we sit here and talk like there's nobody here. I do. And I always forget there's a camera facing you to where they actually can see yeah, your death metal. Yeah. I was going to have you turn around and face the camera. Oh, unicorns. You know what those unicorns are pooping out? Look, right in the middle, the most important one, the Rainbows. yellow line that separates cars on the other side of the road so they won't hit amber. We don't want them so to hit amber. Nobody can cross the yellow line. Damn it. Wow. Let's see if we got any more questions here. Any real questions that we um, should have somebody? Your training schedule up? Hey, do we have a training schedule, Mike? That's no, your really. department. Really? <laughs> Let's talk about what an awesome salesperson so we, I am. We do promoting. have we do have so we have a medical class on the twenty fifth of Feb. Yeah, it's not probably gonna happen, isn't it? Really? It may, may or may not. I don't know. Today's almost today's the thirteenth. Okay, so no. How about we ask and we tell people, please tell us if you would support this. What was the next date we had down? For a medical class. It was a March, March something. March something, yeah. Like 18th or we'll blah, put it blah, out. Blah. We'll put it out. But we do have... I think we have time to fill that medical class. This one okay. is important. Defensive Farm Coaches Instructor, instructor oh Development Oh, my God. Course. Thanks for bringing is, that is up. Is that on your website? Yeah. Well, that's on my Facebook page, and it's on... I Here, honestly, it's on the ICE training because they're the ones that... Uh, Mike is one of the instructors. I will say the instructor, but one of the instructors. Um, it is a three-day... Um, what do you want to call it? Instructor development it's course. An instructor development course. Like, hey, do you want to try to go get your certification to teach uh, two different classes that I see? So, training? if you're interested in getting into the instructional side of things, plus if you just want to know is, more is this info, it here, gentlemen. Yes, it? yes, that's it. Now go down to March 23rd to 25th, right, right there. Here. So it says Jamie Onion because he's the course. Uh, he's the guy that wrote the program. He's the guy that wrote the program, but I'm going to be teaching it. What it really means is Jamie Onion is going to enjoy a Coke and some M&Ms at the back of the room with me because yeah. I'm svelte, and we're going to watch <laughs> you teach some people. Yeah. So, and we're going to watch you make people cry. Yeah. That's, so that's like, who's that, uh, the gentleman that said, what part of the book should I read? I'm like, all, all of it. it. That's Chris Rudd. Yeah. He's yeah. probably following. He might actually be watching you. So, uh, yeah, this group of people so far, and there'll probably be more, but... Like you said, hey, if you want to go think you want to be a firearms instructor because it's easy to make lots of money, jump on in. Let's do it. Uh, you won't be working for me. You can go work for yourself. What's cool is I know like one or two of the people, they're like, hey, I'm the person in my circle that everybody's saying, teach me how to shoot or I want to shoot your guns or, hey, I want you to teach my wife how to shoot because you're the gun guy at work. Um, I admire people that, uh, I mean, you're spending 800 bucks and, and even though 800 bucks might shock some people. You're spending three really long days away from your family. Yeah. Subjecting yourself to probably stepping out of a comfort zone. It's pretty intense. It's not a, it's definitely a not show up and we'll give you a certificate. Is it course. a participation like you can, trophy? You can fail. You can fail. Definitely can. Um, there's going to be a lot of information and it's surprisingly not a lot of shooting. No. Because it's an instructor development course. We're going to teach you how to be an instructor. You got adult learning methodologies and You can only be an instructor if you are an Olympic grade shooter. Yeah, that's not true. Otherwise, I would never teach the thing. Okay. But uh you have to know how to teach to be an instructor. Mm -hmm. Right? So, we mm -hmm. worry about making people teachers, better teachers, mm -hmm. and not better shooters. Well, you're not going to learn how to be a better shooter all in a three-day class. No, no. Just like when you come to our classes. It and, and you're not going to be like the world's greatest instructor. you got to no. continue to practice. But if you want to get your toes wet and mm -hmm. get, you know, start teaching people and giving them some knowledge, this is a place to start. So we go back to... 2014, whenever you took... 2014, 2015, March of 2015, you did it. Eye-opening? Um, at the time, it was probably the... I'm, I'll use the word intense. The most intense training I'd had since I left the military mm -hmm. at the time. I've done some other stuff since then that's more. <laughs> yeah, like Craig Douglas? Yeah, yeah, but you have to do this first CFP before you can do the other stuff. Well, you don't have to, but is it smart? Yeah, it's smart. Let it's more some, of a natural What if somebody literally, as rare as it might be out there, because there's only like 90 of them in the whole country to start with, what if it was rare enough that somebody said, I want to be a combat-focused shooting instructor, and I can just go to combat-focused shooting instructor and development course, would you not suggest doing this first? Yeah, absolutely. And teaching people for maybe a year or two first? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that was a big benefit? I think it helped quite a bit, yeah. Is that why we're rock stars? I think so. Okay. Um no, you toot can, toot. That's our own horn. No, right there. And, and no, really. But it's true. 
It's true from the point of view that it's we true, watch. It's true. Yeah, it's true. So it's it's true from the point of view that uh, I can't ever imagine going to a five day combat focused shooter instructor class that we did. I mean, mm-hmm. hey, that's that's not everybody show up and pass, is it? No, that's definitely not. They how get, many people? It's like that, a forty percent pass rate or something like that. How many people that went through that with us are even doing anything with it right now? And I don't. And I don't mean like you could be doing something with it by actually just teaching your coworkers. Yeah, hanging out with your uh, buddies. So yeah, even because you still have to be certified afterwards. Um, so I'd say I'd say less than fifty percent. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even like DFCs, I admire the people that are taking it. Like a couple of these dudes that are just going to help their friends or whatever. Maybe they want to go into business, set up shop across the street from me. Don't care. Welcome to the club. But they, uh, most people, uh, first of all, most people won't go to class, will they? No. Everybody, I, I meet firearms instructors in my store all the time. And usually they're proud to tell you I'm a firearms instructor. So to make sure I know, but I don't ever see them. And when I say I don't see them do something like this, if somebody went to Paul Howe to get certified, would you say that's somebody putting some effort into it? Yeah, one of the yeah. biggest regrets of my life up to this point. Sure. So they don't have the, to the just... The fact that I did, haven't been able to go yet. Sure. So they don't just have to go to a Rob Pincus slash ICE training instructor development thing. Like, the point is, how many instructors actually go to a class about learning how to be instructors? Not a lot. I mean, they go get their certification, their little sheepskin certificate, and then they don't really... Ex- did you say expand. sheepskin I certificate? Said sheepskin was that to, certificate. Was that to refer to like what condoms used to be made out of or what? They used to use parchment, mm-hmm. aka sheepskin. Mm-hmm. That's what they used to put stuff on. Mm-hmm. Is that how far back It's a end? phrase, man. Are you making fun of like NRA basic pistol? I'm making fun of people that just go get their certificate and never do anything else with it. Okay. All right. We should have a whole show about that. Like not training? Yeah. Resting on your laurels, yeah. Not changing the way you do things. Are you waiting to ask me a question? You kind of whenever Shane moves his head back and forth a lot, I worry about whether he's either watching Wimbledon or, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like watching that between the two airborne guys. Like when you were like, "Are you impressed by that patch?" And Shane didn't say anything. I'm like, "Oh, this shit's gonna get good." He was he was yeah. trying to he was trying to think of the right words. Oh, spelt. I get Spelt's what the word I get what, I get what he was saying. Not go back to that conversation, but I know what he was saying. You could be in the infantry for twenty, and there's a big big gap of time during the cold war you could be in the infantry for 30 years and never get a cib it does not make you make you less of an infantryman sure my point was now they they're putting out the mentality that somehow if you don't have a badge it makes you less of a soldier so they're giving everybody a badge which it's like doing totally the opposite in my opinion anyway no um let's see i want to make sure this uh, Oh, constitutional carry. How many minutes do we have left? Well, give it 15. Okay. Really? Yeah. Constitutional carry. Should people be able to carry without a permit? What do you think? Well, that's what they call constitutional carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. permitless carry. There's how many states? Arizona, New Hampshire, or Vermont? How many? St- is there five states? I don't, I don't know. I think it's five. I don't worry about it. What? We don't know. I don't know. To, we're supposed to be the experts. No, I here. don't have to know everything. It's hard enough to know the yeah. Iowa gun laws. No, but there's alone. there's about five states that allow you to carry without a permit. So they are call people it just dying left and right there? No, they're not. Really? They're not. This guy didn't fall over those states. No, they're not. Yeah. It's funny when I read the articles in the newspaper or in the media, and I'm not throwing all the media under the same high speed bus with a blind driver. But uh, the point is, it's like, oh my God, we're going to have this, this, and this, and this. Nobody needs. You know, you're going to have people without background checks carrying weapons. Um, First of all, anybody can carry a weapon at any given time. I don't care if it's legal or not, if they choose to do so. Like, if they just have the willpower of, I don't care what the laws say, Right. I'm going to carry a gun. Bad guys don't wake up and say, I don't know, man, should I really abide by the law today or am I just going to go for it? I don't think they put that much thought process into it. I think it's a way of life for some bad guys. So, so what's your what's your thought on? My thought is first of all, here's two things, and you, maybe the the lines are going to fill up with phone calls. Shane, are you ready? Do we have like an incoming line where you're going to answer it? The bat phone. <laughs> TPS Media. TPS Media. Please hold. Please yeah. hold. Yeah. First of all, people don't like it when I say I don't think it's a really big pain in the ass or it's that hard to go get your permit in Iowa. It doesn't bother me what I have to do. We have pretty liberal laws here in Iowa, Wait, as far as it's it's relatively easy sure. compared to some other places. Yep. Um. Do I think people should just be able to carry a gun if they can legally own a gun already? Yep, I have no issue with that. Do I still think it will always be like barely a percentage, maybe one 
1%, 2% of gun owners in general, including Amber, actually go train with their firearms? I, I would venture to say Amber doesn't train, but yeah. I oh, agree. but she grew up hunting, or she has guns. So she, right now, she's a gun owner, yeah. and I grew up. Yep. I know people that have guns. Some of my best friends are gun owners. So people yeah. can try to use my own words against me and say that you see, even that guy said not enough people train. Even without training, I don't worry about them going around randomly hitting people in the background at high V. And when people get all mad and say, "But this one time," so first of all, law enforcement hit people in the background more often than civilians ever do. And in law enforcement people, if you get butt hurt by that, it's just a fact. Their, their shootings happen in public places a lot of times, right? Right. So go look at the ones in New York City. Go look and, at some. And, they, and cops also don't have the luxury of not shooting sometimes. Yeah. Like it's, sometimes when we could say, well, I probably won't take that shot. Well, they might have to. You mean like it's their job to go stop pad people? Right. Yeah, it's their job. Yes. Required to do it. Right. Yeah. Expect to go toward the mess. So, so constitutional carry good, yeah? Well, yeah, I could care less about it. And so when the, the problem is some people will say, well, if you care less, it doesn't mean you support it. I absolutely support it. I'm just telling you, if I have to go through what I currently go through to get a permit right now, I'm willing to do that to carry a gun in Iowa because the the, the benefit is greater than the risk. So, so the reward what is about, greater than the What effort. about national reciprocity then? Uh, you know, I, I've read a couple people's opinions, and I understand people say, careful of the Book of Worms. You know, it could be Pandora's box that you're opening, right? I'm of that opinion. Okay. So tell me factually why you think that. Go. Because I don't trust people that live on the coasts mm -hmm. to make decisions for me. Because, once again, I go back to what I said about 45 minutes ago. They think they're smarter than me. Okay. Or you. Okay. Or anybody, right? So I don't want to all of a sudden... Yay, we get national reciprocity. I can carry my gun in New Jersey. But, oh, by the way, I have to follow New Jersey's rules. Yeah. Well, I don't, you have I to don't do, want to follow New Jersey's rules. We have rules. to do that when we go to other states anyway right Not now. to get a permit. No. I I'm, don't have to follow New Jersey's rules to get a permit. I got to follow Iowa's rules. But what I'm saying is you get your Iowa permit, and you go to, like, South Dakota that's where it's not 100. How, that's not how it's going to work. How it's going to work is they're going to make it harder for us in Iowa to get a permit because they don't want to— make it easier for the New Jersey people, so they'll make it harder for everybody. Do you think they'll try to really set a federal standard? Yes, I think they Do you they think will. that low bar of training will be set? But they'll try to make it some sort of bar, right? Yeah. And, they'll, and they'll have some crazy red tape, 45-day wait, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the stupid laws are out there where they don't really want people to have guns, but they're required well, to. So it'll be totally like the permits and the training and all the requirements there are to use your First Amendment rights? Right, right. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I, I think it's more Maybe that likely... right over some people's heads. I got but, you. Yeah. I think it's more likely that they're going to make it way harder for those of us that live in states that are fairly gun-owner-friendly... Mm-hmm. To get a firearm, it's way more likely for but that. But Iowa shall issue. It is. Yeah. So how are they going to pass a federal law that tells Iowa you you? Can't... They'll change it. What do you mean? Once they trump states' rights, once they trump the right of the state. Oh to no accept, no no. Yeah. No. See, we can't because the state should have the right. What do you to mean say... they can't? It's the government. They can do what they want. It's been proven. They can put Japanese people in internment camps. Oh, you're going to go there? I can. Well, the state of Colorado Are we said trusting it's, the government the to state, make a decision for us? The state of Colorado said it's legal to smoke weed. And did you just read the article the other day no, where there, the state of Colorado now has the highest incident of high school dropouts due to drug use? They also have five lost officers in only, like, yeah. how many weeks? Right. Um, but anyway, I'm not associating that with drugs. What I am associating that with is... All the people that literally, openly declared on social media, I'd like to go out and call out some of them. And I will. I'll go back and find their names saying, look how much the crime's gone down since they legalized weed in Colorado. Good luck with that. And I don't even care that they legalize it. Like, you guys know that about me, right? I give a rat's ass. What I'm saying is... Hemp oil, dude. What, and what, sandals. Okay. What I'm saying is, you live in a society that would you not agree the majority of people think it's okay for states to come along and say, we don't care what the federal government says, we want weed to be legal in Colorado. That's what, that's states. Is that cool? I think it's cool. Okay, so why do can't they? Iowa do that with their carry permit? But they're not going to, is my point. Oh, like, you mean it's like hypocrites? Yes. Okay, so once Once they pass a national law, they're, not go they're going to try to make a national standard, yeah. and I have a problem with that because I don't think it'll work. Yeah. And they'll make the it, they'll make it... Should they harder. make it harder to get like a, I don't know. See, and that's the thing. Should it be hard to get a, like a marriage license anywhere in the country? 
Don't even get me started about that. Should it be should it be hard to like practice whatever religion you want to in the country? Yeah. 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 Do you have to get a permit that says I can't just kick in your door and search your house whenever I want, Shane? Weird. I wish there was a permit to. Can be they hear you now? I wish there. Yeah. Were, yes. <laughs> you oh, hey. parenting classes. Yes. How? I, I wish you would. You had to show that you were going to be a good parent before you were able to actually have a kid. I want you to run for president of the United States of America right now. Vote for Shane. Vote for Shane. Thank you. Thank Let's you do much. it. Hashtag vote for Shane. I will be your vice president. Actually, no. <laughs> One step Can away. Can you imagine? One me? heartbeat away. One heartbeat. Yeah. I, actually, you should want me to win the presidency because you'll have it after about day 30 when I go. <laughs> <laughs> Remember my retirement plan? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, but now I'm against national. Really, if you know if you know me and my lifestyle well enough, when I die at my store, which will happen to me from a stress induced heart attack, my loving employees like John and Julie and J two, the we'll, dangerous we'll, J two, dangerous J two, they will sort through all my shit and like, step take over stuff. you. Oh, step yeah. over you where you get. Yeah, him. I get the revolver. Get his dad's 1911, and then John will be like, "Get the get the safe combo out of his wallet and get all his guns." Because by the way, if you want to break into my house, there is no guns. They're all at my store. So. Um, yeah, you know, your friends split your shit up when you're dead, right? Yeah, that's yeah, what they do. That's what it does. I mean, all you cool guys say that. Split up the gear. All yeah. right. What else can we talk about that has any uh, real significance in anyone's life whatsoever, Shane? Let's, let's see. Uh, you know what? I, I, would, I would like you to uh, talk about you guys. You guys update your website, don't you? Horribly. 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 But if somebody were to go to your website... I think that's a good way for you saying... It would be something like this. If somebody Correct? out there has website skills and would like a part-time job at Cedar Valley Outfitters, they should probably come talk to me. Yep. But there, there's your website right there. Yeah. There's well, your it, it sucks. It's really good, and it was really good for what effort we put into it, but it's something we fail at. But I also have to decide how much effort to put into all this. You know, it's an Amazon. It's really an Amazon Prime world. So I need my website to be better. And I need to spend less time talking to people in real life and having any customer service because that's not important anymore. It is. It is important. No, it's really not. It is important. No. But if people went to your website, would uh, quit would, trying to direct people to my website and quit, create me quit business. Quit doing it. Training yeah. and classes. Quit trying to like firearms. drive. Quit trying to drive money, Shane. I, I, I'm sorry. Corporate, corporate greed is what's <laughs> made this country horrible. I heard TPS Media, the Primal Scream, say that the other day. Talk about all the rich people. Did oh my that? god. Did yeah, you did. Yeah. You know who's <laughs> never given me a job? A poor person. Ever. Never. In my whole life. So anyway, to yeah. his point, you can look up upcoming classes. We really should look up. So as we update the yeah, upcoming I'm gonna, classes. I'm gonna go back to the store right now and say update the damn website. Julie. Hurry up. Julie. Julie, please update. Julie. Do it. Let's Julie. Anyone? Anyone? All right. Look at that. Services, yeah. training, upcoming classes. She's not managing her recall well in that picture. Right here. I will permit it. to carry weapon class. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Valentine's Day is sold out. Um what can we tell people? We have a super packed like, like for all you people that already signed up and paid, thank you. My store is gonna be packed Wednesday night. We're packing a lot of people in there. It's good. It was Valentine's night. It's good, good, good. Uh, and you know what? I have to give credit to Julie. It was like she's like, "Well, I'm gonna have a class." I'm like, "You have a class on the 14th. It's Valentine's Day. Nobody's gonna show up." So right now she can do the happy dance and say, "I proved him wrong. I sold it out because mm -hmm. she like gave it away basically." But whatever. Yeah, sold it out. Hey, it's would you me. guys like to? Uh... Would you talk like about to our try? business? Well, I was oh. just wondering, would you like to try to invite um, who? Her, the Who's? Ankeny mom, Amber. Would you, would you like to have a conversation? Well, with like her? I said, I think I think uh, um, I could go a long way in educating her about that part of the world, and she could say, "Well, piss off, this guy. This really isn't that important to me." If that's true, then don't make a video talking about it. It's true, and be super educated about it, like. Again, if I could magically give all these politicians the wisdom I have, everybody can laugh, right? But the point is, worry about first things first. Let's, hey, how about we help veterans, cops, firefighters, and anybody else that has mental illness issues, right? Easy, and everybody cheers, right? Yay. That's some easy shit to say, hard shit to do, right? Yeah, it is very nice. Yeah. So, but spend your time toward that. Don't spend your time worrying about, oh my God, Mike McAmel is dropping off his daughter at school. And has a gun on him in the U drive. The U drive. Where I guarantee you there's how many cars parked in the parking lot with weed, a couple of them with some opiates somewhere. There's narcotics on those same school grounds. And there might be a school janitor that likes to have sex with little kids. Does that happen a lot more often in America and Marion High School District than people with a permit running around killing people? Yeah. 
Like, yeah. They, uh, nobody's getting yeah, sued right now for running around. Did you around. just like pause that I said that? No. You have I, your sixth all lawsuit from just one school yeah, in Marion. So yeah, I was trying to actually mentally count how many lawsuits they had. Dude, there's tons. I know. And, and hey, by the way, much like other uh, sexual crimes or whatever, how many things haven't been reported? You know, like you, you know this as an officer because like you deal with it, right? Like 10 percent. They're going to say maybe roughly 10 percent of sexual assaults and rape get brought to the forefront as in like go all the way of come to light to law enforcement and all that. Like how many never get reported? So way more bigger problems in Iowa yeah, than the U the drive. The U drive. The U drive. Ernie going through the U drive. Is not the problem. Yeah, it's not. So Amber is welcome to come on this show. I would let I, I would admire. I would welcome her with open like coffee cups. What else do you have for great ideas? Wisdom guy in the corner. I think that's it. I'm basically, we, we got all the questions. You know, the more you we know, become I, friends, we just kind of lean on Shane. Like, why don't you have this better prepared? You know what? Why don't you go to Amber's website here? Amber, there she and is. And you can contact her can right people, here. Okay, people see her. And you Hi, can Amber. suggest to Amber I mean, to listen kidding. to the show. Yes. And then she can come on. Amber should go hang out since she's so close. She should go hang out with like Sheena Green at Crossroads and go like learn what gun people are like. Meet somebody like Sheena and say, hey, is it really a bad thing that Sheena wants to carry a gun when she drops off her kid at school? Is that really the problem with Iowa right now? And it might be eye-opening for her. So I will go visit her website. I'll be nice. All right. I've been super nice today. You're the one that said mother effing whatever. Yeah, I did, day. didn't I? It was awesome. Well, what are you supposed to say when somebody points a gun in your face? No, I mean, that's Excuse super me, real. sir, can you please move that object out of my line of vision? Speaking of which, well, you don't want that to trigger awesome. anybody. Yeah, right. Hey, right? yeah, actually. That's going to be uh, my goal this Wednesday. You know, it's couples. Obviously, it's like 50% women. Maybe it's not. We don't judge. It could be like, just because it's couples doesn't mean it's going to be women. I'm going to try to watch my swearing in class this Wednesday. All so right. we're going to start a Let pool. me know how that Let me know how that Like, goes. how many times has Ernie dropped the F-bomb in class? So I'm going to try to keep it like below five. Might be a record. All right. But I only swear in context, don't I? Just like you said. When we start saying, like, maybe things bad guys would say or maybe things you say back to a bad guy. Yep. Uh, you can't do that without... No. Yeah. You there. I challenge you to a duel. So, all right. Anything else, Shane, that we didn't answer? Any questions? No, all not really. I just really want to uh, thank everybody for watching and I really participating. Do and there was a lot of questions asked during this uh, live. So we didn't Facebook. touch on them? Or we did no, no, touch on you them? did. You did a great job. I don't job. feel like we answered many questions. And thank you, Mr. Whoever Thinks I'm Svelte. I know you're actually being sarcastic, Chris but it's McDaniel. okay. Chris McDaniel. Thank you. You're my hero. Um, anything else we need to touch on? No, anything? we're good. Do we need to try to sell anything because we're horrible? No. How we're about good. I just go promote it? Our yeah. next podcast is? Is? 26th. 26th of March. Or no, no of oh, February. February. <laughs> yeah. 12th of March will be after that. Yeah. I do remember, 9 a.m. Yes. So, but the 26th of February, we have back on... Jason Clark. And why are we talking to Jason Clark again? We're going to talk about... I mean that in, lovingly. Yes. In uh, in fight weapons access, more grappling with weapons, and maybe how lack of training may contribute to doing using deadly force, not inappropriately, but maybe when you could have had another option. You mean so everybody can say, they could have done this? Well, not so much that, but just we're just going to talk about it. Okay. We may not answer any questions, but we're going to talk about it. Do you think that by physically and mentally, emotionally, every other Lee empowering yourself by knowing having those skills might lead you to not have to shoot somebody? I think if you've never been punched in the face, mm -hmm. and the first time you get punched in the face, mm -hmm. once again, you have to improvise, yeah. should not be when you're in a real fight. Okay. That's what I think. Shane, I'm going to punch you when we're done. So... <laughs> <laughs> I have too. Right. Believe right. me. I mean, if getting punched in the face a lot is training, I basically I'm like way beyond the you're purple good, belt. You're, you're good I'm to go. Way, you're a black belt. Yeah. yeah black I belt. mean, I need to talk to Jason about how high I'm ranking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did that wax time wax off thing, and I just kept getting pummeled. All, All right. right. Okay. Anything else? Nope. We're good. We'll go home. I'll promote myself better. We're gonna be back. What did we just say? 26th of February. 26th of February, and then after that, uh, March 12th, which we're going to have another special guest. But next time is going to be Jason Clark. As always, thank you for watching us. Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for your questions. I hope we answered. Thank you for whatever dudes thought I was felt. And as always, watch out for the red Chevy truck. Peace out. Peace out.